Oh, goodness. Breaking news. Metricon Stadium. The game will go ahead. That's the good news. And as you heard from the boys at the MCG, nine players and staff from the Giants. Tier 2. And they were exposed for Tier 2 after attending the Wallabies France game on Tuesday night at Amy Stadium. And just announced as well, six players and staff from the Sydney Swans also exposed. There's been some late changes in the match. Both sides running out on the ground. That's the good news. A big four points up for grabs for both of these teams. But this COVID-affected AFL and world continues to just dog us right throughout to the end of round 18. Barry Denner with you. And as always, I've got far more talented people than I surrounding me. Kate McCarthy, the AFLW All-Australian, is here. G'day, Kate. Baz, how are you? I've got a whole lot of notes written down, none of which will be any relevance no. anymore because this has just gone completely haywire. Um, but still looking forward to it. Obviously, the game's going ahead. We'll go through the changes in a minute so that everyone can try and get their head around them, but I'm struggling as it is. Well, it is. We'll get it. We'll recap the whole lot. We'll go to our man, uh, Ashley Chua, very, very shortly just to let us know what's going on in the last probably 20 minutes, 10 minutes before we went on air. So uh, it's all been very interesting. This man calling the action. Great to have him with us. He once described himself, Ash, as a uh, as having the best radio voice since John Laws. Uh, that was on his resume he sent to Triple M. G'day, Peter Cardamani. G'day, Bazza. G'day, Katie. How are you? Nice to see you. Hey, uh, been an interesting uh, last couple of minutes, Baz, as well, the, uh, the yeah. final teams came in. It has. Ash, um, there's been a couple of late changes. Obviously, we know Toby Green is out of the sign for the GWS. And as I mentioned, those... Tier 2 exposures for the both players and staff for the uh, GWS. We haven't got a list of those uh, people, obviously, but um, it has led to some changes, and thankfully the game looks like it's going to go ahead. I don't think we've got uh, Ash quite there yet, so we'll uh, we'll wait to go back to Ash in a minute. Ash, I know that uh, you are uh, just having a little bit of a technical Ash, problem there. Is Ash a, a laid out as been well? Been a long day. He's a laid out, Ash. We've got Ash problems with Ash now. Rugby. Don't tell me he was at the rugby uh, as well. I'll tell you what, let's go down to ground level uh, for Bob Jane T-Marts. Bob Jane T-Marts get world-class deals on world-class brands. Buy three, get one free and instant cashbacks. BobJane.com. You. Belinda Mallon, you are at ground level. What an interesting last 20 minutes. I certainly am. I've got a spinning head. Oh, my God. Metricon is cursed this weekend, can I just say. 15-minute delay Friday night. Last night, the goalposts were bending and gale force winds. The end had to be evacuated. It was insane. And we get here now. There's no teams on the field. You're wondering what's going on. You're asking around. And then you hear 12 in total are being isolated because in Queensland, it is different than in other states where it means a tier two must isolate immediately. Ugh. Word is that I think they actually had COVID tests about 20 minutes ago and they were kind of going, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. But um, I have got a whole lot of scrawling notes in front of me, so forgive me if I'm wrong, but no, this is no. the best I can do for now. Good. For the Giants, the outs, uh, as you said, Matt DeBoer, Griggs, Toby Green and Stein and the ins are Halloran, Brune and Sproul is the medical sub and for the Swans, the outs Callum Mills, Cunningham and O'Riordan and the ins are Halloran, Brune and Sproul, sorry Robottom, Stevens and Winky is the uh, medical sub so that is what we know from ground level here it is all happening, people are just catching their breath and they have said that the game will not be delayed. It will start on time. And uh, hold on to your hats, guys, because who knows what's going to happen from here on in. Good luck to you calling this one. Uh, good on you, Belinda. Great work from you just to clear that all up. And uh, for Ream Hot Water, I ask your plumber to install a room steady, hot and strong. This is the Triple M footy preview. I think we've got Ash back now. Ash and uh, Belinda... Explained it pretty well there, but uh, the numbers setting up for you. But what an interesting last 20 minutes. She certainly don't, for once, a technical malfunction worked in my favour because I had no idea. No idea. It was in so, thank you, Belinda. Yeah. You did a great job. <laughs> you wouldn't have given away half of that information. Nah. You're just looking at me blankly. That's oh, exactly right. Bit, you unplugged your mic. Uh, Triple M Renzet? Yes, please. Big game for the Giants, obviously. If they win tonight, they're inside the eight. Uh, whereas the Swans, they're pressing for a top four position. If they win... They'll uh, only be one game outside of the top four. But uh, the Giants have a pretty good record against the Swans. They've won four out of their past five. But for Sydney, the key team stat for them is their pressure. Number two in the AFL for pressure and tackles and third for scores from turnover differential. And 
Jordan Dawson, he's been in uh, pretty good form, Kate. Past month, number one rated player at the club. Leads the club in metres gained in past couple of matches, averaging 26 disposals. And he's kicked five majors as well. Fantastic, Ash. And, of course, uh, Red Z lending loans for the self-employed for the Triple M Bus Super Special Comments, delivering consistent long-term returns for members. Seabus for us all. Uh, Kate McCarthy. Kate, uh, let's clear everything else out of our head. And, uh, obviously, you've been looking at the match. What are your expectations tonight? Even those late changes for the Swans and the Giants. Yeah, well, I think sort of what I was planning on talking about was, I guess, the impact that Toby Green can have. That's a, that's a massive out for GWS. They've obviously got Stephen Cornelio, who will be coming back after he's been out with his syndesmosis injury since round three. So he's had two games back through the VFL, and they're happy with his progress. During the week, they said he'd play a lot mid-forward. I wouldn't be surprised if we'd see him play a lot more minutes forward now without Toby Green down there, just to play that sort of small forward role and also to add the pressure. Toby Green's pressure in that forward line is elite, so he'll also need to sort of clean up at ground level and put a lot of pressure on. But obviously it is the Sydney Derby, so that's something to focus on here. Originally was going to be played at Ballarat, got moved from Ballarat to the Gold Coast, and now we've got all this extra drama surrounding it. So... These two teams have probably been the two most COVID-affected teams so far with the situation in New South Wales. Yep. They've had to move to Melbourne. They got on a plane, I think, 6 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Then it got changed to the Gold Coast. They've had to really, I guess, be quite resilient, these two teams, and they've done well. They're without their fa- friends and family or their family members as well um, and have been since, I think, at least two or three weeks ago when they had to get out of Sydney. So... It'll be interesting to see. It's 12-8 in the Swans' favour for the Sydney Derby. So all eyes on this one. And and with a lot going on at the moment, um, we'll see how this one plays out. Ash, uh, let's go around the grounds for Choice Hotels. The uh, results earlier today. Earlier today, Baz, the Bombers defeated the Kangaroos by 18 points. Essendon 13-14-92 to North Melbourne 11-8-74. Short while ago, Carlton. Defeated the Magpies by 29 points, 13-13-91. Maggie's 9-8-62. Yeah, Sam Walsh on fire with 39 touches and a major career high for him. And we have another live game as we speak. That's at the Adelaide Oval. Early into the third quarter, it's the Eagles by three points over the Crows. West Coast, 4-7-31 to Adelaide, 4-4-28. In fact, the Eagles have just kicked a major, so they're up by nine points. And just remember, Josh Kennedy, he was a late withdrawal from that particular game. Beautiful, as always, Ash. Comprehensive. Uh, just the, I'll just read quickly from the Sydney Swans press release. In regards to their COVID situation, the Sydney, Sydney Swans can confirm that four players and two staff have been sent into isolation ahead of tonight's game, obviously, uh, in line with the Queensland Government Health Directives. It comes following the reclassification of an exposure site at Amy Park in Victoria under the revised Tier 2 classification. The four players are required to isolate until notified by Queensland Health. James Rowbottom, Dylan Stevens, and Ben Ronke have been added to the team to play tonight, as we heard from Belinda, and the G for the G against the GWS Giants, replacing Callum Mills, Harry Cunningham, and Colin O'Reilly. Hey, Katie, uh, what about the Sydney Swans? They've been in great form. They had a great win against the Western Bulldogs by 19 points last week, and obviously the Giants coming off a loss to the Suns. Uh, winning's uh, great for the confidence, Katie. 19-point win against a very good team in the Bulldogs. Yeah, and then let's not forget that they absolutely demolished the West Coast Eagles by 92 points down at GMHPA the week before that. So them to three goals. They're coming in with really good form. They've been really good in front of the scoreboard as well. Something that I think has been a little lacklustre this round from previous teams. The, the goal kicking and, and that inaccuracy in front of goal has been pretty disappointing this week. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see Sydney typically score a whole lot of points. And GWS, very inconsistent side. I think that's the... The main way to sum up their season, their inconsistency. They've beaten the Demons and the Eagles, who are obviously top eight sides currently, and they've lost to Hawthorne, the Roos, and obviously the Suns last week by one point. So they they need to become far more consistent. They've obviously been very demolished with injury, starting to get a few of those troops back. Obviously, as I mentioned before, Cornelio's back tonight as well, which will help to tighten up that midfield and also the forward line. Nick Blakey plays his 50th game. For the Sydney Swans, under amazing circumstances, what we've seen, obviously the, this match was thrown into a bit of chaos about 20 minutes ago, but again, the AFL have managed to come up trumps and we're going to get a bounce in around about uh, 60 to 80 seconds time. So at the 6.10 time slot, it is going to happen. So that's fantastic news, but 
be fascinating to see what's going on in those coaches' boxes at the moment, Kate. Yeah, I just think it's it's a pretty tough one here. Like, they've got, obviously, very key players from both teams with Callum Mills, who's been fantastic in defence for Sydney, Toby Green and Matt DeBoer, who are very key players. And, I don't know, this is going to affect the game a lot. It's almost a little bit unfair that this game is going ahead, I think, in my opinion. Um, I don't know if you guys agree, but... They're, they're huge outs, like 20 minutes before the game. I'm fine with it, Kate, but <laughs> Carter's needs the money. <laughs> it was a game cancelled, and he, he couldn't put it. No, he won't it, pay you're right, rent. I don't understand yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> um, let's go to that man for McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy. Peter Cardamone is going to kick us off tonight with the Swans going to the right of our broadcast position in the first term. Uh, good on you, Baz, from McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, round 18 from... Uh, Metricon is underway. Triple M Rocks footy out of the middle on the up ward. The veteran flicks out a little handball. Gave it to Perryman under pressure. He goes across the middle of the ground. Kennedy just pushed under the footy. Florent right with him. Footy goes over the line in front of our broadcast. And now we'll have a throw in. Sydney Swans obviously wearing their glorious jerseys, which they debuted last week. They are looking fine. And I do like GWS's strip as well, though. They've gone with the light grey and the nice orange G down the front, so we've got the clash of two brilliant jerseys here. Big hickey in the ruck. Shoves out Flynn, grabs the footy. Canelio will get his first touch since round three. Sharks it at ground level for the Giants and kicks a real high ball towards half forward. Hogan was wrestling in the marking contest with McCartan and McCartan won the one-on-one and marked the true centre-half back for the Swans. Yeah, just goes along the wing on the up and now Goulden takes it. He's wrapped up and now we'll have a bounce. Smack, smack bang centre wing as we touched on in our pre-match. The Giants had lost to the Suns by a point last week. Sydney, 19-point win last week against the Bulldogs. One on Hickey, gave it to the veteran in Kennedy. Inboard handball, tried to get it to Parker on the up. That was clever. Well done, Blakey lowered the eyes, got it to centre half forward. Swans have got the footy 80 from home. So Papley will go short, inside forward 50. It was a clash in the marking contest. But in the end, the mark will be paid to the Sydney Swans about, oh, about 50 metres out from goal. And virtually on a 45-degree angle to Haywood, who flew in the air and got smashed, Kate, but was hung onto the footy. Yeah, good courage. He was open for a fair while. Um, Papley took a while to kick the ball out to him. He was on um, and had to work for the mark as a result, but lining up now. So Will Haywood, for the first score of the match, drops it on. Oh, he's hooked that badly. Has he missed everything? No, he snuck it in for a point. Sydney won behind, and the Giants yet to score in the Triple M Beacon Trade scoreboard. Hey, with 19-5, he goes on the scoreboard. Giants from outside, defensive 50. Perryman takes the mark. Heaney stands it, just pops it over the top. Put Hopper under a little bit of pressure. Went back to Perryman. He couldn't take it. Hewitt couldn't. Kelly did for the Giants. Got it to Perryman out the back. Kennedy on the up cleverly. Fox, Hewitt combined. Kennedy, the veteran, around the body. Gave it to Parker. Inside 25. But he's a target. Amati was there as well. Couldn't take it. Davis for the Giants. Gave it towards Kennedy. His handball was cut off. Reed was there. Over the back. Papley, the boy from Bunyip. Fires a goal along the boundary and kicks a beauty. Great start to Papley. Goal to the Swans. On the Triple M Beacon Trade scoreboard. The Swans won straight. The Giants won behind. That was a great finish. Yeah, and that's the benefit of going in long. They've obviously got the tall targets of Buddy and Amadi to kick it into. Pack formed, spilt to the front, and just some really good roving work. Kept the ball alive, a bit of forward pressure there. Papley got a hand in to put some more pressure on and then just socketed it off the ground brilliantly. But, yeah, good start from the Swans. They've had a lot of field position here. Obviously, with that intercept mark from McCartan helping and getting that slingshot forward, but Papley finished off beautifully and... The uh, celebration that we've come to love from him running the length yes. of the boundary and pumping yeah. the fists. Yep. It's like a World Cup goal. Now, I'd love to see him kick the winner in a granny. I don't know what he'd do oh, then. Uh, I think uh, he'd do the whole lap. His head makes what? <laughs> uh, for McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy. Swans work it out of the centre again. Kick the half forward. Spills towards Ward. Little hand pass off to his teammate in Taranto. Ends up on the outer side wing. Flynn goes back to Kelly. So Kelly now kicks forward to the wing for the Giants. Fox with a fist on it to ground level. Tracking it, Brune nicely for the Giants. Rides the bump, then turns and kicks inside forward. 50 old one hand, Himmelberg has taken the mark, pulled it in, right forward pocket. And he's about 15 metres out, but he's only about eight metres inside the boundary. Beautiful work keeping his opponent out of the drop zone there with the one hand, Himmelberg. Just fended him off almost um, and then protected the drop zone, took the mark. 
So he's going to square himself up and kick across his body for a quick reply to Sydney's goal. Swans are 1-1-7. Giants, this will be their first score from Himmelberg, and it's a major. He slots it home nicely. The hook was good, and the Giants one straight goal. Sydney 1-1-7. In the opening minutes of the first term at Metricon Stadium on the Triple M Beacon Trade scoreboard, supporting Sparky's good people with 7.30 opening hours, trade prices and free delivery from over 100 Beacon Lighting stores. Yeah, you'd think Harry Himmelberg and Jeremy Finlayson are going to have to have big matches tonight. Obviously, we've said before, I'll say it again, Toby Green out uh, with the late COVID drama as well as Matt DeBoer for the Giants. So the two kingpins up the top are going to have to put together a few goals here between them and that's a great start for Himmelberg beautiful mark in the marking contest worked his opponent under and kept him out of the drop zone and then snapped truly so good start for the Giants they've hit back nicely there who's on fire for Red Z Lending Ash Josh Kennedy Pete four disposals and a clearance Triple M Beacon Trade Scoreboard, Sydney 1-1, one, one, GWS 1 straight back, ball back in the middle for McDonald's and Ream Hotwater Triple M Rocks footy Ground level footy, Parker there, couldn't take clean possession over the top of Hopper, he's wrapped up by Taranto, and we'll have a ball up. Matt Tom, Matt Tom, going out this way. Just on the, uh, a couple of metres away from the middle of Metricon, here's Kennedy for the Swans up towards half forward to Marty, just under the footy, well done, Davis roved it beautifully in his left boot around the corner, that was nice, and just push it to the wing, and the mark's been taken by Bruin for the Giants. He turns and just goes real short to the boundary. And Hopper marks his teammate. Went to Tarano and missed him. Allowed McInerney in for Sydney. Hand pass to Stevens. Over the top by hand to Parker. Parker to Hickey. Hickey looks to the corridor trying to dribble a ball in there. And swooping on it was his teammate in Hewitt. Goes back by hand and he's missed the target. Allows the running GWS players in. Kennedy one of those. Short kick inside forward. 50 to Hogan. Drop the mark. Hand pass to the running Canilio. He smashed to the ground in a tackle. Ball spills 50 from the Giants goal. And Hogan will see it out of bounds. Of a boundary throw in broadcast side of the ground. Great defence by Robbie Fox there. He was hanging deep to be that extra sweeper at the back, peeled off his opponent just to put a little bit more pressure on the ball going forward and then was able to add a little bit more and get the ball out. Giants 50 away from their goal in the ruck, fleeing against Hickey. Footy goes to the front. Here's Hewitt, took possession, has walked over the line with Kelly right with him. Big contest through the midfield. Kelly being in great nick as well. So to his Taranto and 60 metres out from the Giants goal. We'll have a throw in. Sydney by a point. We've travelled nearly four and a half minutes in this first quarter. Flynn against Hickey. Hickey won the tap on the up. Kennedy, that was good. Got it around to Kennedy. Kelly, matter of fact, kicked it inside 50. Daniels couldn't take it. Went back in after it. One on big Tommy Green. Just gave it back to Daniels. He fumbled it, went over the line, and we'll have a throw in. So, Ash, in regards to the ladder, let's just recap that because we were certainly busy with the ramifications of the COVID situation pre-match. If Sydney win this game tonight, where does it put them? Yeah, Sydney Swans, they'll stay in sixth position, but essentially, level on points with Brisbane sitting fifth, but only one game outside the top four. Giants win, they're inside the eight. Here we go. So it's a big game for both clubs to finish round 18. Who knows what round 19 is going to look like. Perryman's taking a mark on the wing here from the ball coming out from Sydney. From Sydney's half back line. So Perryman will kick the Giants back inside forward 50. Huge pack, big leapers, no mark. Back of the pack, hand pass comes out to Hickey. The big ruckman will run away. Hand pass into the path of his teammate in Stevens, who traps the footy, runs outside defensive 50, goes back to Lloyd. He kicks forward the wing out of side of the ground. No mark taken. Spills through hands. Perryman's made tracks right across the other side of the ground of the wing. Claims the footy for the Giants. Hand pass to Davis. Another one to Haynes. And now a kick forward of the wing for the Giants. Yeah, Scrubber up to the wing. One on Keneally. He roved it well. Then gave it to big Tommy Green. Flicked that little handball. He looks good as a big bodied midfielder. Now the Giants have got the footy. Here's Jesse Hogan about 25, 30 from home. Just lowers the eyes and found his teammate. That's a great kick. And Bruin didn't let him down. He marked 25 out, 45 degree angle left of your dial. Jeez, that was a beautiful kick. There was a bullet. Lucky he caught it. It would have knocked his head off. But wonderful kick going forward. Not much that Nick Blakey could do there. He's just pinpoint um, passed it straight to his teammate Bruin who will line up for the goal number two for GWS. And GWS have also had the last five inside 50. So... Working well, keeping the pressure up, building a nice wall behind the defence. Got to love the hands from Tommy Green. Footies with Tanner Bruin, and he's going to kick from 30 metres. And this to put the Giants in front by five. He kicks, and he drills it. Nice finish. All clear. Nine minutes gone, first quarter on the Triple M Beacon Trade scoreboard. GWS two straight, Sydney 1-1-7. It's a five-point lead. 
Yeah, they're just setting up really nicely behind the ball, GWS. So whenever the Swans get it and look up, there's not really many players to go to. Good turnover off half back and then just work the ball nicely forward. Cornelio is already having a really nice impact on this game. He's got a few really handy dis uh, disposals through the middle of the field and then sort of set up that attack all the way through. Ash, what are his numbers looking like? Cornelio, four disposals and a couple of clearances. As Baz said, he hasn't played since round three. Don't forget for McDonald's, the custard pie is back for just $1.50 on Macca's loose change menu. And I can assure you from personal experience, they are beautiful. The custard pie. Oh, they're beautiful, Kate. Get into the right. McCafe and just look at them through the window and then tell me you can honestly don't buy one. Just looking at them just drags you in. For McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy again out of the centre of the Giants. Kick the half forward. Yes. Daniels just po pokes it off the ground, runs it along the ground towards Finlayson. And the ball beats him out of bounds and Fox makes sure of it for Sydney. But again, the Giants right forward pocket. Search, they lead by five points. Midway through the first term, Triple M Beacon trade scoreboard. Uh, good on you, Baz. Handy game of footy at the moment. Umpire flicks it into play. Now, Himmelberg was held. And it's going to be a free kick again. Sticky. Much in that, Kate? I think he got him high. So I think there's obviously a little bit of height difference there between Hickey and Himmelberg. And just arm over the shoulder in the ruck contest. So that's given. Kate McCarthy with us. Triple M Seabar super special comments. Lead by five points at the moment. Himmelberg, he's a, uh, a nice player too. 21-14, he goes into round 18. 21 goals, 14. A lead by five, and he's going to take, take kick about 35, 40 metres out on a 45-degree angle. He starts it right. Will it come back enough? Oh, it's a beautiful kick. He's got two. Himmelberg's on fire. And GWS, they've got three goals. They lead by 11 points. We've travelled 11 minutes. Gone first quarter on the Triple M Beacon Trade Scoreboard. Yeah, lovely set shot there by Himmelberg. Just took his time, thought it through beautifully and just used that natural arc that he has on the ball going from right to left and knew his kick perfectly and it never looked like missing the minute it left the boot. Time in forward half, Ash. How are we looking for the Giants? Time in forward half, Kate. They're tracking at 64%. Swans only at 36 Just uh, Swans defensively over the past month. Now, they're only allowing opposition teams to go at 16% goal scoring efficiency, which is the third lowest in the comp. Giants, six entries, but they've nailed three majors at 50%. Ashley Tua celebrating his 20th year on Triple M footy. Red, Triple M Reds headlining stats, of course. Longest. It's a big celebration, isn't it, Ash? You've really turned it on this year. Will we be cheering him out after his oh, last game in the 20th year? Yep. McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy. Again, the Giants with a kick out of the centre off the ground. Lands on the chest of Bruin, who's 50 metres out. He's playing some really nice surge footy at the moment. It doesn't necessarily look pretty, but they're getting the ball forward at all costs. Well, he's hand-passed off to Perryman, who goes short, still to that 50-metre line, and the mark this time is taken by Kennedy. So Kennedy on a 45-degree angle. Just sets up. He's looking, I reckon, that 20-metre mark out from goal. And that's where he goes. Just pops it up. Big leap from Himmelberger. Went behind him. And Hogan's taken the mark. Jesse Hogan will be brought around on a 45-degree angle. But he'll kick from 15. He plays on. Cross the body. Pops it home for the Giants, who've started real well here. Four straight goals now. 1-1-7. One, one, of the Sydney Swans. Triple M Beacon Trade scoreboard supporting Sparkies. Good people. With 7.30 opening hours, trade prices and free delivery from over 100 Beacon Lighting stores. This is a great start for the Giants. As Ash said, Sydney's defence, they've been very miserly and given away very few goals. They've already given away four in the first part. We've got still 12 minutes to go in the first quarter of this game. So a little bit of panic signs, but I really like the way that GWS are just surging the ball forward. It's not allowing the Swans to set up defensively, getting it forward at all costs, getting it out of the middle, winning the clearances. And Jesse Hogan, that was a great mark at the back of the pack. Didn't waste any time, played on and slotted the goal. Triple M, Seabar, super special comments with Kate McCarthy. Great finish from Jesse Hogan. Contested mark, top of the square. And they booted four in a row. Biggest lead of the day. 17 points. Footy back in the middle. And for Triple M, of course, and McDonald's and Ream Hot Water. Triple M rocks footy. Here's the Swans. Goulden. E-double-R-O-L. Inside 50 with a drop punt. Cut off by Canelio. His hand missed. He, handball missed his teammate. Kelly over ran the football. It's about 35 out. Amadi picked it up under a little bit of pressure. Right on Haywood now. In turn, gave it to Stevens. One way, then the other. Squares it up to full forward. All the Giants. And they mark last line of defence. Taylor steadies it down. 
10 players for the Swans yet to touch the ball yet, guys. So they haven't had their fair share of disposals. GWS also leading plus 16 in disposals for this match. Yep, they look uh, they look good. They look on, the Giants. And uh, under difficult circumstances, they've started very well. Short kick was to Kelly in the back pocket, and he kicks a long ball out to the outer side wing. Hopper claimed it. Hand pass to the running player in Perryman, who ran past. Kick the half forward, and Hogan's marked again, 45 metres out. So, terrific start here for the Giants. Could be even better. He goes short. The player who lead and ran on. In fact, it was Lloyd. And Lloyd marks about 25 out on a 45-degree angle. And he's the player that brought it in. So, he sprinted a long way, Kate. And he's got an opportunity now for goal. Yeah, work rate getting back in front of the footy. And he's earned himself a shot at goal as a result as well. Interesting for Sydney. Obviously, their defence we've spoken about a few times tonight already. Not looking as set up, and I think that has a big part to play with Callum Mills not playing. Yep. He's been huge for them, averaging 28 disposals. My super coach team is going to take a big yeah. hit not having him in tonight <laughs> yeah. as well. You're probably uh, going to lose now. Yeah. So Lloyd settles with the footy. He's on a better than 45 degree angle. He dropped it onto his boot, 40 out. So Lloyd for GWS's fifth goal, puts it home, and they've got five straight. Five goals straight. 30 for the GWS. The Swans stagnant on 117. And now we're midway through this first term at Metricon Stadium under difficult circumstances. The Giants have started beautifully on the Triple M Beacon Trade scoreboard. Well, having a look at the Harvey Norman replay, John Longmire not looking super happy, trying to get a lot of messages out. And I'd say that would be to the back line and the defensive unit, giving up far too many marks inside 50 too easily and I think as I said before that might come down to the absence of Callum Mills yes. Spot on uh, Kate, so Sydney only concede 9 marks per game inside their D50 which is the second least of their comp we've already conceded 5 in this first quarter As two of the Triple M Red Z landing stats, Bob Jane Timutz, George Hewitt is on the ground getting his hamstrings worked on boys looking a little tight Thank you Belinda Mallon, Bob Jane Timutz get world class deals on world class brands buy three, get one free and instant cash backs, bobjane.com.au. 23-point lead, Triple M Beacon Trade scoreboard for McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy. Umpire quickly comes in, we'll have a secondary ball up. They've started beautifully. No, Toby Green, plenty of news, of course, with Ash in our pre-match. His hop up, quick little handball. They go up towards half forward. McInerney waits for the footy for the Swans, coming to meet it's Himmelberg. When he did, he was wrapped up, thrown to the ground by Wicks. And the umpire said no prior, and we'll have a bounce between the boundary and the point of the square. Left half four Giants have started beautifully. Yes, five goals straight, plays 1-1-7. Still 10 minutes left to play of game time of this first term. So this is a massive opening from the Giants, and it will be a free to them on the wing too. So the highly fancied Swans are under the pump here. And the Giants are the ones that have started very, very well. Long ball inside forward, 50 forward pocket. Canilio off hands, tracks it to the boundary line. The ball beats him out of bounds, left forward pocket. So a 23-point lead to the Giants at Metricon Stadium over the highly fancied Sydney Swans. Umpire sets himself, the boundary umpire flicks it. Nice high throw in as well. Marty worked his way to the front. Footy ends up with Kennedy, gave it to Parker. Great smother by Tom Green. Loose footy ends up... With Blake, he gave it to Parker. As he kicked, he was pushed. Cut up by Haynes for the GWS Giants. Gave it to Taranto. Taranto in turn. Now gave it towards Cornelio. High up and under the full forward. No one could take the mark. Over the back. Florent for Sydney under a little bit of pressure. Here's Rampy at the top of the square. He defends. Flicked out a little handball. Gave it to Mac and Ernie. Swans need to be precise. Baz with a beautiful kick. Yeah, a little low drop punt. And Wicks marks and goes to Goulden. So Goulden outside defensive 50 on the boundary line. Left half back. Just holds it up. Looks to the corridor. Oh, he's got, to, he's got to find his man. He was squeezed in between four giants. That was Florin. It was a good kick in the end. Hand pass to Blakey in game 50. Gave it back to, the, to Parker. Another hand pass to Dawson. Looks to the outer side wing. Lloyd has marked and played on. Taking the bounce. Runs to 55. He wants to take him on. Hand pass to Blakey. Back to Lloyd for Sydney. Little low drop punt inside forward 50. No target met. So opportunity for Heaney at ground level. Punts it up the floor and his hand pass smothered. Got smashed. Footy on the deck. Wicks picks it up. Runs to the forward pocket. Hand pass off to Hewitt. Hewitt squared it up the full forward to Franklin. Tapped away from him. Full of the ball. Bell claims it. The hand pass went to Stevens. Back to Franklin. Buddy from the forward pocket has a snap. It's just across the face. Okay. And it's punted through for a rush point. One, two, eight, Sydney. Five straight goals. The Giants and Buddy. Yeah. So he did his first touch, Ash. 
Spot on, Baz, uh, for Red Set. First touch. A much better passage of play there for the Sydney Swans. They already get some uncontested possessions and uncontested marks. Up Same. until that point, 11 uncontested marks to GWS. Only one to Sydney before that passage of play. So far better constructed. Got the ball down. Same. Got an inside 50 and a shot on goal as a result of it. Footy in the back pocket. It's Kate McCarthy for Triple MC Bar Super Come. Special Comics. They Touch. have started beautifully. Great pressure from the Giants. Hyden kicks out side defensive 50. The rove came from Ward on the uphand ball to Taranto. His little dappy kick's going to be cut off. Rampy on the uh, cleverly. Now gave it towards Blakey. Blakey under a little bit of pressure. Ends up back with him. Now they go one way. Now the other. Fox just beats one tackle and now the other. Got it to Dawson. He's normally a good user. Left foot inside 50. Where's Buddy over the back? And he marked one grab two. He went to ground. Taylor for the Giants. Picks it up. Touch, clears touch. defensive 50. Made Puts fun. it into a little bit of space to a one-on-one. -on -one. Under pressure Flynn. Wow. Belder can't come in. He was wrapped up. Thrown to the boundary line. But they push it over. They do. That's a good result for the Swans. They were away the Giants. And we'll have a throw in. 75 out from the Swannies goal, they're going to the right of your dial. Look at the Triple M Harvey Norman replay. But he did everything right there, worked his opponent under the ball, got Taylor out of the way, but just misread the trajectory of the ball and couldn't quite get his second mid on it. Out of the ruck, Amati grabs it. For Sydney, high ball, Franklin came out. Taylor worked him underneath the footy and then claimed it and ran outside defensive 50 for the Giants. It was a good one-on-one. -on -one. Kick four to the wing, just in the vacant territory, bouncing ball close to the boundary line will go out of bounds. This is a Harvey Norman replay. Big clash. It's Taylor and Franklin. There you go. Buddy in front, but good body contact from Taylor. Don't forget to purchase with 60 months interest-free at Harvey Norman and receive a bonus gift card. Conditions apply. What about some uh, Triple M Reds and Lenning statues on fire, Ash? Yeah, Perryman and Cornelio, six disposals each. Kennedy with seven for the Swans. Hopper on the up, but he ends up with Kelly on his right boot. His kick was smothered. Not on Parker. Swans on the up. Cleverly, Fox under pressure. Kicks to an open wing. One on one over the back. Davis went through his hands, butted up, hairballed inboard. Now with the one hand, two hands, he missed it. His Heaney tried to give the don't argue, but I reckon he might be pinned. Might be against Heaney. Yeah, too high. And the free kick will go to Bruin. And he's got a defensive side of the wing. It's a 22-point lead, Baz, and we've travelled 21 and a half first quarter. Short kick in towards the centre to Lloyd for the GWS. And he marks. He goes out very wide to Sam Reed, who ran a long way to the outer side wing. The footy virtually had stopped. Yeah, yeah. He picked it up. Kicks back to Lloyd in the centre. Dangerous ball. And it's been cut off by Lloyd of Sydney. So Lloyd of Sydney wins the contest. But Crunch took the mark. Kicks him back inside forward 50. Franklin frustrated. As Taylor was right on his hammer in the one-on-one, -on -one and Bailey just shoved him to the ground. And Taylor saw the ball just fall into his bread basket and took the mark. He started well on the big man, hasn't he? Yeah, he certainly has, and Buddy definitely looking a little bit frustrated, so he'll need to get that out of his game. I think maybe starting to lead up a ball at the ball a little bit more than wanting the ball on his head because he's getting beaten in those one-on-ones when it's coming in long, and he is such a great player when he's leading up at the footy. It's so hard to stop. Hey, Ash, let's go around the ground for Choice Hotel Group. We won earlier today. Earlier today was the Bombers by 18 points over the yep. Kangaroos. Carlton, too good for the Magpies by 29. And the live game, it's almost three-quarter time. West Coast by 21 over the Crows. Oh, you calling that Ash? Yeah? I, I am. All right. Yep. West Coast to home, according to Ash. Five unanswered goals to the Giants. They lead by 22 points. 23 minutes we're approaching in this first quarter on the Triple M Beacon Trade scoreboard. Here's Parker. Forward of the wing, gave it to Dawson. 80 from home. Lowers the eyes, kick off the side of the boot. It's a shocker. And it goes over the line. We'll have a throw in 50 out from the Swannies goal. Not great build-up, Kate. And the interesting one, number one ranked player on the ground is Tanner Bruin. He was picked 12 at the 2020 draft. He's so far got five disposals, three marks, one goal, but three score involvements to go with that. So he's had a huge first quarter. 22 points up, the Giants. Ripping start for them. And the Swans now just starting to peg the game back a little bit. Hewitt claims it from the boundary throw and hand pass to Kennedy. His kick was smothered for the Swans and Ward's taken possession. A whistle's gone. A free kick against Cornelio. He got the hand pass delivered to him and then Dawson tackled him. Incorrect disposal. Dawson free kick for Sydney. He'll kick wide to the pocket. Franklin tried to mark on his chest. Taylor got a hand around his body. A little touch on the footy, and that was enough to work it out of bounds. About 40 around from Sydney's goal. Yeah, I like that better from Buddy. Leading up at the footy, Dawson's got a beautiful left leg as well, but he needs to get those mitts out in front, not take it on the chest, Buddy. 
You've got massive hands. Get them out in front and take them there. Uh, she's a superstar. Number nine for St Kilda in the AFL Women's. It's Kate McCarthy. Triple MC bar super special comments. And half back. Here's Ward. Try to keep it in. Hopper. He kicked it into his opponent in Patley. And I reckon it's a free kick. Yeah, it'll go to the Giants. It's a fortune. Pat, Patley not happy. The free kick will go. No matter of fact, it's now going to be... So we're going to go and get a, uh, yeah, a review. Yeah, the umpire on the boundary umpire just I'll go through. Right. discussing <laughs> whether the ball was out of bounds. On the line or outside pipe? Come down the line. Come down the line, please. On the full or not? Off from Papley's from knee. From it's come off his shin having a look at the Harvey Norman replay, so that technically counts as out on the full. So unlucky one there, but they will get the free kick back in. So Tommy Green Move it on. Play on. brings it in for the Giants at half back towards the wing. Huge pack. Back of the pack, Daniels. And pass off to Himmelberg, who's a long way from home. Delivers the ball inside forward, 50 wide, and Lloyd and Lloyd go at it. Lloyd for Sydney and Lloyd for the GWS. We both saw the ball, ball out of bounds, Ash. Yeah, but it's Isaac Heaney, second at the Swans for Marks inside 50. Hasn't touched the pill as yet. The only player for the Swans outside of road bottom is Stapless. 40 out from the Giants, Cole. Himmelberg had to kick around uh, an opponent. He's a Swans from the throw-in. Parker, kick half smothered. Bell overruns it. Goulden tackled without it. On the up, Stevens and gave it back to Bell. It was a cop on high, three kick. Sorry, GWS. A three kick, sounds of the game. What happened here, Kate? Uh, just a high fend off there, so it's actually a free kick to GWS, just on the top of 50, so the high fend off coming from the Swans player. So Cumming will be the recipient. Maybe a little bit too far out of the record. It's 22 point lead. Left of your dial. They've kicked five in a row, if you don't mind. It's been a big day of footy, Baz. Triple header. It has. So you've uh, give up come, coming, he's not going to get it. Oh, no, I haven't given up, Baz, but it's a long, long way out. Right. So when he comes to the left for six in a row, he unloads with a long drop punt, and he's kicked it to the right. Not yep. the distance, no problem, Baz. No, you're right. I'm happy to, happy to say that I was wrong. It's a behind to the Giants, though, and they go further in front. 23-point lead. We're approaching three, uh, quarter, quarter time, 26 minutes gone. Now, we've got a lot of players out for this one, Baz. I bet you were hoping that one of the Lloyds from either team may have yeah. gone to the rugby, but yeah. bad luck. No, yeah. that was disappointing. And they're lining up against each yeah, other. Yeah, they're playing well. against each other, which Just is Just to really help yeah, you out. Fantastic. Gordon on the wing. Punches the hand pass forward to Franklin. So Buddy's a long way from home. He's about 75 from home. Sydney in possession on the outer side wing. Heaney, one way then the other. Kick wide to the pocket. Taylor again with a fist on the footy over the top of Josh Kennedy and... Just killed the footy out of bounds, and the young man's had a terrific start to the game. Yeah, he's having a great first quarter just then. Buddy, his opponent, had gone up the ground, peeled off him beautifully because he knew he couldn't impact it, and then came over as the third man up to spoil the ball out of bounds. Great start. Bob Jane, team arts, Belinda. John Longby coaching from the bench and taking a lot of time to talk to his players one-on-one -on -one just to try to get them to settle down or agree group. It's been such a mad start to the game. He needed a full forward, long drop punt. Beautiful mark there by Haynes against the fly. That was a ripper. It was a two-on-one as well. In favour of the Giants, he read it beautifully. Yeah, Taylor did perfectly again there. We're giving a lot of praise to the young man. Kept Buddy down and out of the contest and allowed him to fly up and take that Mark Haynes uncontested in the end. Triple MC bar super special comments with Kate McCarthy, 23 point lead to the GWS Giants. Here's Hopper through the wing, handball towards the boundary line. They pick it up and they bang it towards half for the Giants. And a one-on-one, -on -one. Himmelberg against Rampy. Rampy brought it to ground on the up to Ranto. Quick little handball. Now gave it to Daniels, that was the eyes. Great kick. And the mark's been taken by Kennedy for the Giants. You'll Kick directly in front, about 40 metres out. That was a beautiful front and square. That's beautiful kick from Daniels going back inside. It was about, I think, 45 out when he got it. Could have blazed away and had a shot at pretty low percentage, but saw Taylor, uh, sorry, Kennedy, running towards him with the beautiful lead, and he hit him up nicely. So Adam Kennedy, Mark, 40 metres out directly in front. Left of your doll. Six in a row, if you don't mind. This for a 29-point lead there, straight through the middle. Giants on fire as we approach quarter time at Metricon Stadium. 28 and a half gone first quarter on the Triple M Beacon Trade scoreboard. 6-1-37, Sydney 1-2-8. What a finish. Yeah, well, Sydney had been able to wrestle back a little bit of momentum but not get any bang for their buck, so they're still on the one goal for the quarter. But GWS, on the other hand, they got one opportunity going inside 50, turned it into yet another mark inside 50, and that's their sixth for the quarter. Sydney yet to take a mark inside 50. 
Yeah, it's a big story for different reasons, this match. But um, at the moment, a big story with the GWF. They were 29 points up at uh, close to quarter time. The Swans just managing the one goal. So they've certainly settled best. And that's quite obvious to GWS. And Swans have got plenty to work to do here. Uh, the GWS desperate for that spot in the eight. And certainly it's got to start here at round 18 for McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks, Footy, Flynn in the ruck. The Sydney Derby happening, but not in Sydney. At Metricon Stadium, tap down to ground level players from both sides. Matt, Pile Tom, on top of the footy, the umpire calls for a ball up. So they'll flood in off the square now. He throws it up in the air. Big hickey against Flynn. Both had hands on it. Hewitt got there first, got smashed to ground level. Ball in dispute. Which tried to work it out. Florence in there for Sydney. Flynn got to the bottom of the pack and pushed it out the side. Lloyd, Kelly, Ward involved for the Giants. Push still now to the broadcast wing. Rolling around and tumbling Kennedy. Goulden comes in, picks it up for Sydney. Clean hand pass to McInerney, who broke a tackle. Goes for the leading player in Franklin. It's a bouncing ball. Oh, Buddy just toe-poked it up the floor. That was brilliant. Then he was tackled and lost possession of the footy. And the free kick will go to O'Halloran, who was the tackler for the GWS Giants at halfback. How good was Buddy Franklin with a little uh, tap? Yeah, it was a great tap up to his uh, uh, teammate there, but just couldn't break the tackle in front of goal and lacking a little bit of composure going inside 50, the Swans here. Footy with Hopper, defensive 50 came late. His opponent was at 50, no. He's a Sydney opponent. Just gets up gingerly as well, Wicks, and Footy's with Hopper at the moment. He's got his the goalie defends to the back and he wheels around on his right boot. He's called to play on and he kicks it to an open wing. Now big Flynn's got to go, worked his way to the front. That fist came from Hickey. The ray will come from Gordon. He couldn't take clean possessions. Giants under pressure. Here's Parker. He lost possession when he was tackled by Perryman. Ends up with Daniels. He's held up. No pride will have a bounce. 29 point lead. 25 seconds left in his first quarter. Good game of footy, Baz. From of course, the Giants. If you're a Giants supporter, Sydney got some problems. They have. Hopper out of the pack has his kick smothered. Bounce back to him. Kennedy had hands on it. Back to Hopper. And pass to Iden now. Defensive side of the wing. Only 10 seconds on the clock, so he's got to go long, and he does. Tarando underneath it. Hogan at the fall of the ball. 50 from goal, but he's been tackled by Dawson. Footy hits the deck and tapped over the line by Canilio. And out of bounds, 45 around from the Giants' goal. I didn't think so. Ash, uh, Harry to your left. Harry, can we recap who Tom. pulled out of this match before the start due to the COVID situation that has affected both Sydney and the GWS? Certainly can, Baz, for the Swans. Out, Callum Mills, O'Reardon and Cunningham. And in for the Swans was uh, Ronke, who's a sub, or Ronk, Dylan Stevens and Rowbottom. And after the break, I'll confirm GWS Giants for you shortly. 29 points is the margin at quarter time. The GWS Giants lead the Sydney Swans. The Giants... 6-1-37, Sydney 1-2-8. What's happening with Adelaide and the West Coast Eagles, Ash? You're in control, Baz. It's West Coast by 21 points over the Crows early into the fourth quarter. For McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple A Rocks footy. That quarter for Beacon Trade. There to support Sparkies with 7.30am opening hours, trade prices and free delivery from over 100 Beacon Lighting stores. For Macca's 50th birthday, Triple M rocks footy. The custard pie is back for just $1.50 on Macca's loose change menu. Hi, it's Marty Sheargold from Triple M's Marty Sheargold Show and right now, right now, Triple M rocks football and I'm back Monday morning from 6. Daisy Thomas with us. Did you know that Cooper Harvey played with Brent Harvey? He's still in ripping condition. Oh, He's got God. the big pythons. I think you were talking about he went in the lockdown route of I'm going to do exercise every day. Yeah. yeah. What a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Which route did you take? Uh, have a look at me. Triple M's Marty Sheargold Show. Back Monday from 6. Or here at any time on the new listener app. 7.30 tonight. An unmissable season of Survivor begins. Two tribes will answer the age-old question. Brains? Or Braun. Australian Survivor. Brains vs. Braun. Starts 7.30 tonight on 10. Shut up. The foot is on Triple M. In 2021, Triple M rocks footy. You don't get that on the other Nuts. stations. Temper mattresses. Feel comfort. Feel support. Feel temper. Find AFL player stories at temper.com.au. That is a ripper. Hard yakka is for a new breed of Aussie legends. Toughness is in their DNA. No shortcuts. Hard yakka. A history of hard. That makes it tough. For Reem and McDonald's. Triple M rocks footy. Getting your groceries delivered is easy with Coles. And with Click and collect orders. We'll bring your groceries straight to your car at over 400 stores. Find out more at coles.com.au forward slash 
shop. It's that easy. Coles. Value the Australian way. Nothing Else Matters. A symphonic tribute to Metallica. Featuring a 24-piece symphony orchestra with damaging. Performing Metallica classics. September 24th at the Palais Theatre. Tickets from only $49.90. Book your Metallica Symphonic Tribute tickets now from the Palais Theatre or Ticketmaster. Get ready to own the city with the Kia Picanto GT Hatch. Turn heads with a razor-sharp sports body kit and 16-inch alloy wheels. Inspire your inner enthusiast and tackle the toughest of corners with ride and handling fine-tuned for Australian roads. Feel the excitement from the punchy turbocharged engine and immerse yourself in the sports-inspired cockpit. Book a test drive for your chance to own the city in a Kia Picanto GT Hatch. For more details or warranty terms, go to kia.com.au. At Liquorland, there's always great value. Like a 24-pack of Peroni Nastro Azzurro 330ml bottles for just $42. So head into your local Liquorland today or shop online and collect your order in just 30 minutes. At Comsec, we believe you should be able to slip on your favourite jacket, enjoy a delicious bite, and never miss an opportunity while you're at it. So our market-leading app lets you receive updates on your Apple Watch anywhere, anytime. Cheers! <laughs> Comsec, where Australia invests. 7.30 tonight, an unmissable season of Survivor begins. Two tribes will answer the age-old question, brains or brawn? Australian Survivor, brains versus brawn, starts 7.30 tonight on 10. Shut up! The is Triple M! Triple M rocks footy. This quarter for IGA Liquor, proudly local, proudly independent. Well, quarter time at Metricon Stadium and the scoreline will tell us that it's a 29-point lead to the GWS after six goals to one first term. 6-1-37 plays, 1-2-8. One, 1-2-8 two, eight. One, two, eight are the Sydney Swans. Barry Denner, Peter Cardamani, Kate McCarthy, Ashley Chua, Belinda Malinash, uh, the Triple M Red Z landing stats and also just the players again that were affected. We had a COVID situation before the game. Nine players and staff from the Giants. Six players and staff from Sydney have been reclassified as Tier 2 contacts and 20 minutes before the bounce down, uh, because they all attended the Wallabies France match Tuesday night at Amy Stadium, there were massive changes to this match. Certainly was, Baz, uh, with the Giants. Just recapping their ins and outs. The outs were Toby Green, Matt DeBoer, and Stein, Jacob Stein. And the ins were O'Halloran, Sproul, and Bruin. And for the Sydney Swans, Callum Mills, Cunningham, and O'Reardon were the three players who were out. And in came Robottom, Ronk, and Dylan Stevens. Just some uh, red Z lending stats. Positives here for GWS. Swans are number two for pressure, but tonight, Giants at 197 v Sydney at 177, and four out of the six majors for the Giants have come from Swans turnovers. Yeah, and it's just that pressure from Sydney, I guess. This was going to be with all of the drama that was going on before the bounce. There was enough drama leading up to the game with the change of venue and teams having to get out of Melbourne as quick as possible, but... The drama adding to that with all the outs and the changes was going to be which team, uh, I guess, adapted the best. And easily it's been GWS. We haven't seen what the Swans have been able to do for the rest of the season with their high pressure and high tackle rates. They haven't brought that. They've started extremely slow and the Giants have got the jump on them. For McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M rocks footy. We start the second term with an unkind bounce. So it'll be recalled. There'll be a ball up in the centre of the ground. 29-point leaders are the GWS over the Swans. Swans with plenty of work to do here. What have they got tonight? Hickey's got hands on the footy, brings it to ground level, goes onto his own ball. Flynn, his opposing, opposing Ruckman, tackles him. Tommy Green's at the bottom of the pack. He's tackled the umpire. We call for a ball up. Bob Jane T-Marks, Belinda Mellon. Errol Goulden getting some work done on his lower back and hamstring area during that break. It's his 19th birthday today, so not such a happy birthday for him. No, not too good. Bob Jane T-Marks get world-class deals on world-class brands. Buy three, get one free, and instant cash back. Bobjane.com.au. There's another tackle in the centre, another ball up. And about 12 players around the footy. Tap the ground level, hop up, off balance. Got a, just a real high kick that's not 15 metres. Play on, said the umpire. Shoving players out of the way and tracking the footy was Brune. Long kick towards full forward, and good mark taken by McCartney, who tracked back with the football. 
and marked over Finlayson at fullback for Sydney. Yeah, he did really well. Hey, earlier today, 450 games for an umpire at the MCG today too, Ash. What a great performance that was. Yeah, Brett Rosemary. Yep. 2000, I believe he debuted. 21 years at the elite level. Great effort. Here's Lloyd in the back pocket for the Swans. They're under pressure at the moment. If you've just joined us, 29 points. They, they trail. Great kick out. And here's Florent. He marks defensive 50. Just handles over the top now. His ramp, he normally uses nicely on his left boot. He goes along the boundary line. Great mark. Goulden takes it. Now he wheel around on his left boot and kick it long inside 50 to full forward for the Swannies. No one really at home, and when they were, they went to ground. One of those was Amati on the up. Here's Davis for the GWS Giants. Across his body, can he keep it in? No. Parker to bring it in. 29-point lead they trail at the moment. They've done some nice little attacking early in the second quarter, Baz. Short kick and Haywood's mark just inside forward 50. Ash, around the grounds, Adelaide and the West Coast Eagles. Nine minutes into the final quarter is the Eagles by 21 points over the Crows. 9-11-65, Adelaide 6-8-44. So Haywood will come in off the boundary line and drop it onto his boot. About 47 metres out. Does he go for goal? No, he's pulled the kick and just kicked to the hot spot at the square. Flynn's in there. And the big Ruckman was a high ball, easily slapped it through for a rush point for Sydney. Who are 1-3-9, 6-1-37 the Giants. We're just seconds into the second term on the Triple M IJ Licker scoreboard. Footy at fullback, Perryman. He's got the football. He just runs his full measure and they're attacking to right of your dial. He goes to halfback. Jesse Hogan, a long way from home, takes the mark at halfback. That's what you want to see from a forward, Kate. Yeah, it's another good mark from Jesse Hogan. He's taken, I think, three for the match. He's been very competitive in the air and taken some really strong grabs overhead, so they want to keep seeing that for the Giants. Kate McCarthy for Trick Bullem. Seabar super along the boundary line. The Giants need to be precise. Under press, it was Lloyd at two on one. McCartan and Rampy just knock it over the line and we'll have a throw in right half forward. 37 plays nine. So just the three minutes into the second term. The Giants with a six goal first term. And have held sway thus far in the match. So the boundary throw in. About 65 from home. The Giants search again. Hickey tapped down at ground level. Kennedy had it, lost it. Big Flynn goes back onto it for the GWS and kick to the forward pocket. It's a high ball. Punched away from Canilio. He's on hands and knees. Can't trap it. Parker's got it tackled. Dragged to the ground. Kennedy sees the ball spill his way. And he's tackled as well with a footy held to his chest. And the umpire again comes in for another ball up. Still 40 metres away from the Giants' goal. And they hang, it, hang on to a very, very good lead at the moment. 6-1-37, Sydney 1-3-9. Hogan in the goal square. He's got McCartan right with him. That's a great matchup. There's the throw up. Hickey won at ground level footy. Taken away by Cornelio. Kicked into the pocket. Kelly chases. Couldn't keep it in. Now we'll have a throw in. That's okay for the Swannies. Six unanswered goals at quarter time. It's a 29-point lead. Himmelberg with two. 29 was the biggest lead. It's back to 28 points. We travelled... Four minutes, second quarter. Umpire throws it back into play. Triple M. IJ Licker scoreboard over the back. Parker went to ground. Now here's Daniels under a little bit of pressure. Flicked out a little handball. Here's Kelly across his body. Goes to full forward. Jesse Hogan's got to go. Push his opponent under the footy. Terrific play there by Louis. Kate went away by Fox. Fox to Lloyd for the Swans. Got a handball to Florent. Need to be precise. Sold a bit of candy now. His kick wasn't great though. Under a little bit of pressure. McInerney went to ground. Going in after the footy. Florent. Now there's a whistle off the play. Maybe a throw. I'm true. Yeah, he's called a throw against uh, McInerney. He's not happy about it nice at all either. I haven't seen the replay yet, but we'll keep an eye out for it. But usually when players react that, I guess, angry towards the umpire, you'd think there's probably a reason for it and that he's got a hand to it. Well, Perryman, he is a nice kick of the footy. And he's going to kick it from just outside 50. He'll come in and now he gets to a 48. Fires at goal. It's just for seven and a half. If you don't mind, goal umpire doesn't move. Giants on fire. 7-1-43, 1-3-9, five and a half gone. Second quarter of the triple M. IJ Licker scoreboard, great finish. Yeah, well, they've just been really efficient in front of goal. They've kicked seven goals and one behind, and each opportunity that they've had to kick a goal, they've taken the, the full opportunity and slotted it through. Having a look at the triple M Harvey Norman replay for a minute, I think he did get a handball out. It wasn't the most conventional handball, so you could kind of forgive the umpire if he was blocked a little bit for his view, but... Nonetheless, they've given away the free and he slotted the goal, Perryman. That was a beautiful set shot. 
Harvey Norman, purchase with 60 months interest free at Harvey Norman and receive a bonus gift card, conditions apply. For Red Z, Swans only concede 44 points from turnovers per game, which is ranked fifth defensively. They've already conceded 30 points as we speak. Five out of the seven majors for the Giants, Swans turnovers. For McDonald's and Ream Hotwater, Triple M Rocks footy, Swans out of the centre, kick the half forward, Bell tracks it, coming came the other way, claimed it for the Giants. Little hand pass to Perryman, another one to Ward at half back, over to Kelly, a looping hand pass back to Ward. He slapped it to a teammate who just hand passed it 15 metres towards the outer side wing. McInerney put his head over it. Wrapped up in a tackle by coming, and the umpire will come in and ball it up on Thank the you. outer side wing about Tom? three metres inside the Thanks, boundary. Matt. Swan's pressure was pretty poor in the first quarter. Ash, how are they going for the second quarter? Have they increased it at all? Yeah, a lot better this quarter. They're at 243 opposed to the first quarter only at 177. Thanks, guys. Ward pushed over Tom? the line by the big boy in Hickey, and the umpire Matt? said, no, no, throw it in, take your boundary, out of sight. 34-point lead to GWS. Seven minutes gone, second quarter. Triple M, IJ Liquor scoreboard. Sunday evening footy for Metricon Stadium. Battle of the bridge. Here's Daniels. Flipped out a little handball. They're under a little bit of pressure. They go towards half forward. One on Swannies. Handball missed though. Around the body. Here's Hewitt. Georgie. Chain of handballs. Dawson. Now to Florent. Need to be precise through the midfield. Take some risks. They dropped the footy. Went through the hands of Stevens. Over the back. Hayward was there as well. Kelly picked it up for the Giants. Went backwards. Now releases Taylor. He in turn goes towards Taranto. Needs to be precise. Great kick towards the boundary line. And now they'll steady down. Kelly's got it. So Kelly stands and just fists on his knees and waits for the option. Called the play on by the umpire. So he drives the ball across the wing out of side of the ground. Whistles. And Hogan's going to get a free kick in the pack. That's what happens when you've taken three really good contested marks for the game. You start to feel a few hands around your jersey. They... Get a little bit concerned about you going up with the mark and he's earned himself the free kick as a result of a great start to this game. Pat McCarthy on the Triple M Seabus Super Special Comments. Stand. Delivering consistent long-term returns for members. Seabus for us all. Short kick to Finlayson. And he's taken the mark. So still outside forward 50. Way outside. Goes very Stand. short to Ward. Ward now will go across to Iden, who marks 65 from Stand. home. Just looks at a crowded forward 50. A lot of one-on-ones. Just waits for the lead. Comes out wide. Big leap from Flynn, the ruckman, through his hands towards the boundary line. And Fox, happy to see it over for the Swans. So still 25 around from the Giants' goal. 7-1, 43. Plays one goal, 3-9. And we are eight and a half into the second term. And that's all on the Triple MIJ Liga scoreboard. It's all the Giants at the moment. Umpire flicks it back into play. 28 metres out. Hickey won the tap. Deep in his defence. Dawson picked it up. Himmelberg wrapped him up. And Himmelberg has booted two. Went to ground and now the umpire comes in quickly and will have a bounce. 30 metres out, 45 degree angle. Let's go around the grounds, Ash, for Choice Hotel Groups. We won early today. Thanks, Pete. Early today it was the Bombers by 18 points over the Kangaroos, Blues by 29 over the Magpies, and currently we have the Eagles by 23 over the Crows, halfway into the final quarter. Tap down to Kelly at ground level, has a little snap for the Giants and pushed it left. As he fell to his backside and threw for one point. 7 2 44 now, the Giants. 1 3 9 are the Swans. Yeah. And we are at the nine and a half minute mark of the second term. Triple M, IJ Liga score, but IJ Liga, proudly local, proudly independent. Hey, Kate, what are you doing? If you're uh, John Longmire, what are you doing right now? They just need to, I think, get a few more uncontested marks and take a little bit of control of possession. They keep kicking long to a contest. It's one on one footy. They need to find some uncontested marks, work up the ground there forwards a little bit more as this looks a bit better as they're taking it, switching lanes, getting some uncontested ball through. Yeah, Kennedy at half back. He goes to the outer side. Swans work it. Here's Buddy Franklin. One-on-one -on -one with Taylor Buddy. Takes it. Hambles over the top. Got it to Wicks. 35 out. Fires at goal. Low drop punt. Goes across the face. And he misses it one behind to the Swans. Another thing is making the most of their opportunities. That should have been a coast-to-coast -coast goal then. They could have kicked that. That would have put a little bit more pressure on the GWS Giants. But at the moment, they're going 1-4 but with a lack of inside 50s and clean marks inside 50 as well. Kate McCarthy with us, Triple M Seabar Super Special Comments. The Triple M Ijalica scoreboard behind the Sydney 44 plays 10. So short kick to Green, that's Tommy Green. Toby Green was withdrawn from the match beforehand due to the COVID situation. Tommy Green, it's short to Hogan and he's spoiled. And the footy goes out of bounds. So a boundary throw in. Swans just 
seem to be trying to take a breath here, Kate, to try and work their way back into the game. Yeah, another area for, of concern for the Swans in this second quarter. They're down 5-1 in clearances, so they'll want to clean that up, get a little bit of first use of the footy. Hickey's winning the ball from the tap, but they're not winning it out of the clearance. Flynn this time beats him. Hand pass to Tommy Green. His hand pass to Smothered. Spills to Kennedy. Kennedy for Sydney. Hand pass to Gordon. Another one to Papley. Loves a goal from 35. Hooks across his body. Swans have got their second goal. And Papley's got his second as well. He's got both. And the Giants, they still have a handy lead, but the Swans worked hard there. 7 2 44. Sydney 2 4 16. And that's all at the 11 and a half minute marks of the second term in the Triple MIJ Liga scoreboard. Yeah, well, that came from winning just their second clearance of the court. Got the ball out of the wing there, the boundary throw in. Josh Kennedy, who's been magnificent so far, and then Papley running out of the stoppage, got the ball. And if you need a, a goal as a Sydney player, you can rely on Tom Papley, ever reliable in front of goals, and kicks their second goal and his second goal for the match. Leads back to 28 points. Papley, the only goal kicker for the Swannies. First goal with the two-minute mark. It was the first goal for the game to Ash. Certainly was. It was the uh, first goal of the game to Tom Papley for the Swans. So two majors for him. Well done. Buddy Franklin on the uh, boundary line. Yeah, Buddy Franklin very quiet. He's only had the deceptively four possessions. Hasn't hit the scoreboard. Triple M, IJ Licker's scoreboard. 7 2 44 to 2 4 16, back to 28 points. And for McDonald's and Remont Porter, Triple M Rocks footy. Here's Taranto wrapped up, thrown to the ground. Georgie Hewitt goes in after it. Kelly on the up for the Giants. Gave it a bit. Toby Green, he kicked up towards half forward. Terrific play there by McCartan. Picked it up. He didn't try to get boot the ball under a little bit of pressure. The Giants flick out a little handball. Here's Kelly. He missed his opponent, Kennedy, near the boundary line. Can they keep it in? They did nicely. They went backwards with a handball on the up. Perryman, clever little handball. Up towards half forward. It's a one-on-one -on -one contest. Lloyd kept his feet for the Swans. Footy near the boundary line. Perryman's there. So too is Finn Lace. And under pressure was Kelly. Kicked into the pocket. Jesse Hogan, the target. Fox sees it. able will have a throw in. 20, 20 metres out from the Giants' goal. So the ball will be spun back into play with about 12 minutes left to play in this second term. The Swans have got the last goal. And before that, the GWS Giants had banged on seven. So it's going to be a tough 12 minutes here for Swans fans who'll be wanting to work their way back in before half time. Tommy Green's got it though. Boundary throw in forward pocket for the Giants. Rush kicker Marty tracks the footy, grabs it. Hopper lays the tackle on him. And the footy spills out of his grasp and the umpire will ball it up. So still inside forward 50, the Giants. And Marty in the ruck. Himmelberg, a big leap, tapped it down the ground level to Tommy Green. Hand pass looking for a target, missed him. Wicks got in the way, but again goes in Haynes. Hand pass to Rando. He'll kick them to the forward pocket. Kelly behind the pack. Sees the ball bounce away from him, go out of bounds. Right forward pocket for the Giants. And again, the Swans struggling to get it out of their coach. Did Robbie Fox get a hand on that one then, guys? Because if he didn't, that should have been an unrealistic attempt, free kick. I'm not sure that he did. He went up high, read the ball well, but I don't think he got a touch on it. So unlucky there for Giants not to get a... Uh, Free kick in front of goal. Papley with two for the Swans. Himmelberg with two for the Giants. Umpire throws it in. Himmelberg wrapped up as he took possession in the ruck. He's hop of the ball. He's wrapped up by Georgie Hewitt. Plenty going on. The tempo's lifted. We'll have another bounce. 20 metres out. 45 degree angle. Right of your dial. Giants into attack. Umpire throws it up. Amadi won the tap. Grand level footy. Under a little bit of pressure. Dawson bangs it outside. Defensive 50. Coming in to meet it is Heaney. He's had a quiet nine. Let's get some uh, Reds and Lending stats on Heaney, Ash. Certainly has only two touches for Heaney and scoreless. Thanks, Jeremy. Another area of concern for the Swans is just that ability to lock the ball inside 50. They're yet to lay a tackle inside 50. They've had 15 entries. On the other hand, GWS have laid seven tackles inside 50. They've had 18 entries. So to keep that pressure on the other team, you need to affect those tackles inside 50 as well. Giants with a 28-point lead, a delivery inside forward 50 for them. Lloyd for Sydney in the back pocket, claims it. Rush kick, they'll be marked by Taylor. So it'll be a re-entry for the Giants. At metric on, just doesn't elect to kick. Hand passes to Finlayson, who was standing next to him. Long drop punt. Hogan in front of the pack, let out, couldn't mark. Himmelberg behind, slapped away from him. Ward claims it, hand pass to Canilio. Kick across the body from Taranto, won't be a goal, it's wide. And oh, well Lloyd underneath it just uh, sort of wrong fitted himself and slipped as the ball went to land on his chest, Kate, and it came off his chest and went out of bounds. You could almost raffle that one then, the Giants. They fed that many handballs inside 50 to uncontested players, but no one really wanted to have a shot at goal, and then in the end, the one person that was under pressure ended up putting it on the boot. Just two goals for the uh, second term. 
One each, one to Perryman and also one to Papley. Here's a throw in, Amadi. Rips it away from the contest. Georgie Hewitt cop on high. There's a free kick against Lloyd. And he'll just steady it down. Last line of defence. Back pocket. 28-point lead to the Giants. And they've dominated from the get-go. They go to the back pocket. Mark's been taken by McCartan Bazer, and he's got it for the Swannies. So he indicates he wants to go to the outer side wing, and that usually means he'll go short, and he does. The hand cut pass comes back from Lloyd to him. Kick to Florent. He doesn't take the mark. Now it's dangerous. Tarando's got it. Punched it to ground level. A little short ball will come into Lloyd. And he marks 40 out. Just only takes one little incorrect disposal. Misses the target, Kate, and you're under the pump, aren't you? And Chew Man, if he kicks this, this would be the how many goal from turnover for the Swans, uh, for the GWS Giants? Number six. Yeah, that's huge. You can't give away six goals on turnover. The problem is, as soon as you turn over the ball, all the defenders have started to clear out. They're nowhere near their player, and you can see how easy it is to get a mark inside 50 then. 24-8 from set shots this year is Lloyd. The pass came from O'Halloran. Lloyd, beautiful drop putt. He's got a couple. And that was a 46-metre drop putt that sailed over the goal umpire's hat. And the Giants are certainly in control here tonight. They're 8-2-50, Sydney 2-4-16. Triple M, IJ Liga scoreboard. IJ Liga proudly local. Proudly independent, 17 and a half into the second term. Yeah, well, that time the turnover came just from Ollie Florent dropping a pretty easy mark at the end. And as I said before, you can't turn over the ball in that area. All of your defenders have cleared out. They've tried to help to take up some good space so that you can switch the ball and work it that way. And they're nowhere near there, a direct opponent. So if you switch it there, sorry, turn it over there. It's very hard to defend, and Lloyd made them pay there with a very nice set shot in front of goal, and that's his second goal for the evening. Footy back in the middle, Triple M, IGA Liquor's scoreboard. 8 2 50, if you don't mind, how's your footy tipping going this weekend? That's the Giants, Sydney 2 4 16, 34 point lead. Footy back in the middle, and for McDonald's and Remark Water, Triple M Rocks Footy, we're going to do all the labour again, secondary bounce. I'll be 8 from 8 if the Giants get up tonight. 8 from 8. Serious? Oh. <laughs> no, you're not. Kate's nose is growing. Mm. Footy in the middle. Here's Parker over it. Swans need one. They need about five. Gave it a hickey under pressure. He was pushed as he kicked. Kennedy cut it off. Tried to get in the path of Haynes. Under pressure at half back. Right on Bell. Gave it towards Blakey. Into space. Now, here's Parker. Handball. Now gave it to Mack. And Ernie got it to 52 metres out. Low drop punt. Is they going to roll through? It does. That's much needed. Back to 30 points. 18 and a half minutes gone. GWS 8-2-50, Sydney 3-4-22, back to 28 points, matter of fact, on the Triple M IJ Liquor scoreboard. Yeah, well, that came from finally winning a centre clearance. We'll get to the two man in a minute for the stats on that, but they were able to run the ball out of the stoppage. Lovely, crafty handballs getting it forward, and it was a bit of a wobbler, but it went through, so that's what you need sometimes for a bit of luck to go your way, and bounce of the ball went through, and... McInerney got himself a goal, but just the pressure around the footy, their clearances, their work constructing the ball forward just hasn't been there tonight. They've been very off from the start of the game, so if they can wrestle some momentum back from the middle of the ground, they're back in this now. Yeah, those clearances cater for all, but overall the Giants plus seven in clearances. For McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M rocks footy. Bounce good this time. Hickey, nice tap towards Josh Kennedy. Bounced away from him. Parker comes in, wrapped up by Warden Taranto. The umpire will ball it up. Matt, Let's go around the grounds, Ash. What's happening in the West Coast and Adelaide? It's the Eagles. They're out to a 36-point lead over the Crows, 26 into the final quarter. Oh, yeah, Ash, you tipped that a long, long time ago. The Eagles would win. Parker out of the centre, bangs a kick to half forward. Iden rides a bump after grabbing the footy and then kicks it back here to the broadcast wing. Bouncing ball contest. Daniels gets in front of his opponent and taps the ball out of bounds for the Giants. So from neutral territory, we'll have a boundary throw in with a 28-point lead for the Giants with eight and a half minutes left to play in the second term. Great contest, K, between Taylor and Buddy Franklin. Buddy Franklin, 23 goals. He's got to go till 1,000. That's a long way off at the moment. Swannies have only booted three tonight. They trail by 28. Here's Hopper. Lost the footy. Kennedy for the Swans. Put it in the path of McInerney. His handball under pressure. Gave it to Parker along the boundary line. Gave it to Hickey. The journey man, his handball cut off. Well done, Hopper, cut it off. Goes to half forward. Here's Jesse Hogan. Couldn't take it. The rope came from Daniel. Goes to a one on one on the goal square. Perryman couldn't take it. Well done, Blakey got back to help out. Sees it over the line. That was a good result for the Swannies. They were coming, the Giants. Yeah, Jacob Hopper having a good second quarter. Ash, what are his stats for the game so far? 
triple and red's head on the back of 41 touches last week which was a career high he's 11 disposals but throwing five tackles as well but he spins back into play again swans really under the pump here tonight Hickey slaps it down to ground level. The Giants in the van again. Hand pass comes out to Ward. Kicks across his body. Won't make the distance. And Lloyd in the last line for Sydney marks on his chest. Bruin will be brought back. So Lloyd for the Swans. Just trying to work it out of that back half again. Little short kick to Blakey. Lloyd runs past for the hand pass. He's deep left back pocket. Blakey. He looks to the left and throws his arm up in frustration. There's nothing there. So he has to go out to the right to the outer side wing. Franklin. Big leap, no mark. Full of the ball, Taranto. High kick back inside for the Giants. A pack of four fly. Front and square was Brune. He rolls with a footy to the deck, and they tumble in on top of him. The umpire will ball it up. But again, it's 45 out from the Giants' goal. And the Giants just dominating in that forward half, Ash. They have, and that's an area they've been lacking over the past couple of years. Ranked 16th since 2019, but tonight... They're tracking at 58%, Swans at 42. Two to Lloyd, two to Himmelberg. Swanies by 28. Here's Taranto, but the Giants goes into the pocket. Player on his own, can he mark? Daniels got it. Great build-up, Kate. They did look slick tonight, don't they? She says marks inside 50. They're absolutely killing the Swans. They've got no real, I guess, one-on-one -on -one contact. And the feed that's coming in from their midfielders is just precise and going straight to either the small forward or the key forward. Whereas on the other hand, Sydney Swans... They're just bombing it long, trying to hit Buddy every time, either on a lead or on his head, and it's not working. Kate McCarthy for the Triple MC Bar Super Special comments. This for a 34-point lead. He's 35 out. Worse than a 45-degree angle. He kicks it across the face. You think he might have missed everything. He certainly has. Let's go around the ground. Shores Hotel Group. West Coast taking on Adelaide. Ash, what's the score? Yeah, thanks, Pete. It's uh, almost full time. It's the Eagles by 36 points over the Crows, 29 into the final term. So Dawson... Oh, past the ramp. He's put this in. Oh, he hasn't put it out in the full. Jeez, that looked out. So the Swans get the advantage there of being called in. Fox receives a hand pass and then runs and delivers towards Franklin Ford of the wing. But again, the ball's punched out of Buddy's hands in a one-on-one. -on -one. Looks all right, the Buds to uh, Kate, but he just is struggling to work his way into the match at the moment. You can't write a champion off, but... He hasn't worked his way in too much tonight. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he had a big second half after the first half performance, but he hasn't had the best service. The ball coming in hasn't been too crisp, but he also was, hasn't been able to take those big marks to help him get out of trouble either. Kelly takes it away from the boundary, throwing it half back, 28-point lead. It's a Giants lead. He goes to half forward. Toronto picks it up, broke the tackle of Blakey, ends up with Kennedy for the GWS Giants, goes into the pocket, Finlayson. He kept his feet. McCartan went to ground, Finlayson picked it up, squared it up, great kick. And the mark's been taken by Jesse Hogan, he can go back and have a ping at it for his second, and they are dominating the Giants. Their swift ball movement is absolutely killing the Swans. Jesse Hogan there had about five metres either side of him with absolutely no opponent. He's a key forward for GWS, I'm not sure how he gets back and has that much space on his own inside 50. So Jesse Hogan will come in. He's booted eight goals for going into this game. He's already booted one in the first quarter. This for his second and the ninth before half time. He fires at goal, stabs at it, and makes no mistake. You right, Thomas? Yeah. 24 and a half gone in the second term. Triple M, IJ Licker scoreboard. 9-2-56 the Giants. Sydney, 3-4-22. It's a very nice lead. The Triple M, IJ Licker scoreboard. IJ Licker proudly local, proudly independent. Yeah, well, the Swans are going to need to make some moves if they're going to chew back this lead at all and to keep working through. Sorry, Chew, I was um, saying the word Chew then, not your name. No. <laughs> That's what I looked up for. Right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's becoming, I guess, quite important for them to hit the scoreboard late in this second quarter. There's only five minutes to go. They're going to need to, I guess, make some ground back on this scoreboard. But Giants running forward in waves and they've just got three players inside 50 everywhere you look at the moment. Their defence is really lacking the Swans with that big out of Callum Mills. They haven't really turned it on at all this quarter, or this half, sorry. Just key ball winners for the Giants in this quarter, Kate. Taranto's racked up 10 touches, Kelly 9, Ward 6 touches as well. Ask a plumber to install a room, steady, hot and strong for McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy. Free to the Swans from the bounce, and it's going to go to Parker. So Parker can pump them long to full forward in front. Hainzo brings it to ground for the Giants. Pat Litt before the ball, he's dangerous. Put his head into his opponent's tummy. Oh, Reed's not happy. We'll have a look at the Harvey Norman, but Papley's got the free kick, 48 out. 
He's literally headbutted his opponent yep. there to get the free. I don't like that. No, it was uh, it looked pretty obvious, and uh, that's why Reed was so frustrated. Anyway, Papley's got the free. He's kicked a couple, and the Swans have only got three themselves. He doesn't go for goal. He squares up a pass. We've got loose players everywhere. Kennedy was there, and McInerney as well. McInerney just got in front of Kennedy, his, his teammate, and took the mark 45 out virtually directly in front. Now, looking at the Harvey Norman replay, he's literally headbutted his opponent's chest there. I'm not sure what Reed was supposed to do. He's If he didn't wrap his arms around him, he probably could have got away with it, but it's pretty hard when you know that you need to wrap up the ball carrier inside 50 to not tackle that person. He's got a good record set shots, this uh, young man, McInerney Ash. Yes, career-wise, six zip. So let's hope he doesn't spoil it from a Swans point of view. Directly in front, 50 metres out. Beautiful long drop punt off the boot. That's a ripping goal. Nothing better than a beautiful drop punt. And he's got a couple, McInerney. And Sydney, a desperately needed goal, and they get one late in the second term. They get a 4-4-28. The Giants, 9-2-56. Triple MIJ, look a scoreboard, and we are 27 minutes into this second quarter. Yeah, questions over how Papley earned his free kick there, but... Can't say much wrong about the uh, delivery inside 50, though. He kept his head up, kept his eyes up, looked around, saw that there was a big gap. I think he was trying to hit Josh Kennedy, who, having a look at the replay, was all on his lonesome at the top of 50. McInerney slotted in. He said, don't worry, I've kicked six straight. I'll kick seven straight for my career here, and I'll get us back within reach. Kate McCarthy, Triple M Bar super special comment. Six goals for the quarter. Three to Sydney, three to the Giants. Biggest lead of the quarter, 34 points. I think we've got there a few times. Two outs, Red Zed Lending. Yeah, we certainly have. Spot on, Pete. Yeah. Out of the middle is Parker. Gave it to Kennedy. Swans come again. Go to full forward. Big pack of players over the back. Clever play there by Taylor. Went to ground, but a handball in the space. Papley to run in. Try to keep it in. No, Haywood was right with him. Reed and also there, Davis and also Kelly want a free kick for a deliberate. They won't get it. We'll have a throw in. Parker having a big second quarter for the Swans. He's had eight disposals, but the big one, four clearances to go with that. Boundary throw in. Nice Triple M Red Z landing stats there as the ball spins in forward pocket for the Swans. Hewitt's got it, bounced off a couple of tacklers and the ball is being held to his chest. <laughs> Kelly grip on it, but he Genuine didn't make a genuine attempt. attempt according to the umpire, so Kelly in the back pocket will get the free kick. Well, he sort of didn't try and punch it out, Kate, did he? He just sort of let Kelly hold it to his I think tummy, Kelly basically. had a hold of his left arm. Yep. I don't think the umpire was Aware happy of that? with that. No. <laughs> Himmelberg's got it on the outer side wing. Hand pass to big Finlayson. And the Giants will come again inside forward 50. Oh, big leap hopper on forward 50. Drop the mark, though. Florin at the back at halfback for Sydney. Will clear it out towards Kennedy. The ball bounced away from the veteran and out of bounds. And a boundary throw in halfway between wing and half forward for the Giants. 9-2-56, the GWS, Sydney, 4-4-28. So a 28-point lead to the Swans. Two and a half minutes left to play in the first half. Good on you, Bazza. Sunday evening footy, here's Hickey, won the tap. Tried to put it in the path of Parker, he ever ran it. Kennedy goes in, Kelly's there. So it's Georgie Hewitt for the Swans, gave a handball to Kennedy. Cross his body, goes to a winger, Marty the target. Came off the fist of Davis, what a player he's been. Kate McCarthy, great career. And the footy goes over the line, and we'll have a throw in out of sight. Smack bang, centre wing. Quarter time was a 29-point lead to the GWS Giants. And the footy's on the outer side. Bounce the umpire sets himself, and he flicks it back into play. Yeah, Giants comfortable at the moment. O'Halloran at the bottom of the pack. Put it out towards Green, who hand-passed off to Big Reed. Sam Reed slammed to the deck in a tackle. The umpire will ball it up again on the wing. 28 points. The Giants wait. Tap down the ground level by Reed. Kennedy's got it, wrapped up in a tackle. Umpire said again, give it back to me. Still on the wing, out of side of the ground. Geez, he doesn't muck about. Just throws it straight in the air. Flynn tapped down to Ward. Gets a clearing ball this time for the Giants, the half forward. It's a dangerous footy. Lloyd's got to track it for Sydney. Daniel's got in the way. Allowed Hopper in. Sprints away from the pack. Little short ball is good. And Hogan's got another chance to score. He's marked 45 out on a 45-degree angle. Hogan's just marked everything tonight that's come into his grasp. He's got one hand on that and just sort of, I guess, grabbed it, used all his strength with that one hand and pulled it back in. That was another great mark for him. That was his fifth mark of the game. He's playing very well tonight and a good target up forward for the Giants. Spins the footy in his hand. He's salivating at the prospect of having a shot for goal, then changed his mind. He went short. 
And Kelly picks it up from 25 out from the spillage. It'll land on the edge of the square for the GWS. And off hands, it goes out of bounds. Just changed his mind at the last second, Jesse Hogan. And they maintain a 28-point lead. Could have been better. A minute and a half before halftime. I'm not sure why he changed his mind. He's been kicking the ball beautifully tonight, and it was well within his range. Probably should have just gone back and had the shot. Himmelberg out of the rug, took it. He was wrapped up, thrown to the ground by Hickey. Here's Georgie, who gave it to Parker across his body. Papley, can they get a late goal? The Swans, they go to the outer side. Put it in the path of Gould, and he marks. He's been held up. He's got Bell further down the field now. He's going to wheel around on his left boot. We're approaching a minute to go in this quarter now. He went one way, then the other back towards the boundary line. Mark's been taken by Mac and Ernie. He's already booted the two tonight. Then goes backwards, back to Gould. Now he can flick out a little handball. He does under a little bit of pressure. Here they come. Inside 50. Lloyd goes into the pocket. Haywood's a target. Haynes right with him. Came off hands. We'll have a throw in. Jesse Hogan just back on him. He's taken four marks inside 50 tonight. Five for the game. The Swans, in total as a team, have only taken two marks inside 50. Footy spins back into play. Deep forward pocket. Can Sydney just burst here? Hickey tried to burst through the pack himself and throw a boot at it. Smothered. Taylor picked it up. Little kick off the ground. It might be good from Papley. He burst through the pack and he's got it. He's got three. Well, he came from nowhere. Just sprinted in. Closing speed. Put his slipper into it from 15 out. And that's his second goal from just kicking it off the ground. 5-4, 34, Sydney. 9-2. 56 other GWS side Joe Liga scoreboard. Let us stay just Katie's ooh, if it gets close to goal. Yeah, it would have been. Excited. It would have been great to see Tom Papley at one end and Toby Green at the other. Two are probably the craftiest forwards in the game at the moment, but unfortunately, Toby Green was a laid out because he decided to go to the rugby during the week. But Papley, ever the opportunist, two goals, as you said, Baz, that he's socket off the ground. John Longmire is happy. I think he can sense that the boys are a little bit down on the bench and that the atmosphere or the feeling within the team isn't quite there. He's really doing his best sitting down there to get around the boys and to really G up the atmosphere there for them. So good to see that from John Longmire, really knowing his play as well and knowing how they're going in the game. Triple MC bus. Super special comments, Kate McCarthy, Triple M, Idealica scoreboard, and yep, the McDonald's and Reem Hot Water, Triple M rocks footy. Here's Hickey, lead is 22 points. They got a late goal, Papley's got three. Here's Georgie Hewitt out of side. Wrapped up by Daniels, got a handball to Mac and Ernie. Got it to Lord around his body, Swans will come. 18 seconds left, they need a mark. Amati flies, got a push in the back. Haynes went to ground, Davis picked it up. Flicked out a little handball, under pressure coming. They need to get it inside, 50 with a high drop punt. They need a late mark. Will they get it? Now over the back is Parker! Takes a mark! What a, what a finish to the first half this would be. McInerney huge there. He's had some really big yeah. plays in the last few minutes. I'd say the last five or so minutes since he kicked that goal, he's really come into the game and, and really stamped his authority on it, as well as this man, Luke Parker. He's had a huge second quarter, and this would just put the cherry on top by slotting the last goal of the half. Ah, uh, They're up and about the Swannies. They're coming. They've kicked two in a row. And Parker to kick... The third goal on a row to reduce the margin to 16 points. After the siren at halftime, he comes in, 45 metres, great finish to the first half, and he drills it. And they get to him. Great first half on Triple M footy. It's half time, and the Giants, well, they lead, but the Swannies are coming. 9 2 56 to 6 4 40. Giants by 16, it's half time. And for McDonald's and Ream Hot Water. Triple M rocks football. That quarter for IGA Liquor. Proudly local, proudly independent. For Ream Hot Water. Triple M rocks footy. Built tough for Aussie conditions. When it comes to water heating, ask your plumber to install a ring. Hi, it's Marty Sheargold from Triple M's Marty Sheargold Show. And right now, right now, Triple M rocks football. And I'm back Monday morning from 6. Fixed to shake up AFL considers Vic escape for club. Is this moving around because of the mask restrictions? I think it's the masks. Fun to watch him play in masks, though, (laughs) wouldn't it? Gotta take your mouth guard out to kick a goal. You take your mask off first. (laughs) Mouth guard out. (laughs) I'm kicking for goal. Triple M's Marty Sheargold Show. Weekdays from 6. Or here at any time on the new listener app. Nothing else matters. A symphonic tribute to Metallica. Featuring a 24-piece symphony orchestra with Damage Inc. Performing Metallica Classics. September 24th at the Palais Theatre. Tickets from only $49.90. 
Tokyo Metallica Symphonic Tribute tickets now from the Palais Theatre or Ticketmaster. G'day, Howie here. If you're a sports fanatic like me, then have a listen to my podcast, The Howie Games, where I sit down with the biggest names in sport, like Masters winner Adam Scott, NBA champion Luke Longley, and surfing gun Sally Fitzgibbons to ask them how they started out, who supported them along the way, and how they've picked themselves up after their biggest losses. Search The Howie Games Podcast. Download the new listener app now and listen for free. Listener. Need a new morning brew? Award-winning Coles Urban Coffee Culture is at Coles Express. Try our Arabica Bean Blend. Quality coffee with notes of chocolate and toffee roasted to perfection. Be your own barista from just $1. Express yourself at Coles Express. Hey, Hoops, do you want to live the sea life? Of course, Anthony, but what if I want to take it to the next level? The next level? You can't handle the next level. Come on, Maroon, like you, you know I love life in the fast lane. Well, you'd be looking at the sea RXP X300. Hoopsy, my boy. Start her up. That does sound pretty extreme. The pros use the RXPX 300, and you know what else? They win races on them, too. What if you want a tandem, Anthony? Any room for you on the back? She seats two. You beauty. Find your local Sea Doo dealer at seadoo.com.au. It's the greatest race on earth. Tour de France 2021. Stream free on SBS On Demand. Demand different. Every day, more and more Aussies are finding creative ways to add power pollen to their lives. So I ask the question, how do you power pollen? I put two on my cereal every day. I sprinkle them on toast, so yum. In a smoothie with a banana. Power up with power pollen. Get your six-month supply now. That's 400 capsules for just $129.95 plus delivery and receive a bonus pack of hot menthol lozenges. How do you power pollen? Powerpollen.com.au Now with Vodafone's everyday low prices, you can get 40 gigabytes for just $40 a month on our SIM-only light plan. So now you can stream more of what you love. Don't miss out. Go to vodafone.com.au or in store today. Rule with great value today and every day with Vodafone. For use in us, TNC Apply. Shut up! The foot is on Triple M! Triple M rocks footy. This half time break for X Lock Tools and Accessories by Bosch. Extra fast, extra safe, and extra easy. Well, a big finish to Sydney and the second half of that second turn. Five goals to three in the end and the Giants hang on to a 16-point lead after a kick after the siren by Parker to put them back to 16 points, Sydney. 9-2-56 are the Giants, 6-4-40 are the Sydney Swans. This is the halftime break for Bosch Power Tools. X-Lock Tools and Accessory by Bosch. Extra fast, extra safe and extra easy. Baz and Carters, Ashley Chua, Kate McCarthy. Ash, um, just quickly, the Reds and Lenning stats at half time. Let us know what they tell you with this 16-point lead to the Giants. Positives for the Giants. They're winning the territory battle 56% time in the four and a half. Sydney at 44 plus 23 in contested ball and their pressure is up as well at 198, which is 18 above the league average. Six out of their nine majors resulted from Sydney turnovers. However, Baz, in that second quarter, Sydney won six out of the last eight clearances, and they won the time in the forward half at 65%, V35, and they kicked the last three majors. All right, a lot happened before this game. The ramifications will be felt, we think, all week because uh, there was exposures to players and staff from both Sydney and the Giants. It had an effect on the bounce of this game, only nine minutes before the match, it was still getting shuffled around. We've got on the line a man who knows all about what's going on. Of course, our own Tommy Brown here at Triple M Footy, where he dominates and, of course, had Channel 7 as well. Tommy, uh, great to have you on, mate, uh, to finish off the round. But uh, a big event happened before this match. Yeah, thanks, Baz. An incredible situation. I'm here at Metricon tonight. The players involved arrived and were preparing to play. Now, just for context, Amy Park, which is where the rugby was, some of the tier sites were reclassified as late as 5 p.m. That was the second time today they'd been reclassified. That meant that 15 players and officials, approximately six players from the Swans and the Giants, were reclassified as Tier 2. Now, I'll get to the implications of that shortly, but the upshot, of course, was they included Toby Green, Callum Mills, like serious superstars. Now, the implications tonight, though, are now just being appreciated and are quite stunning. There's an anomaly or an inconsistency currently between the Victorian and Queensland rules. At the moment, Queensland expects those 15 
players and officials now to isolate for 14 days. Isolate. That would include Mills and Green. Now, the AFL behind the scene is working on trying to resolve this anomaly because, let's just be clear, they're not seeking any special treatment. Under Victorian rules, you have to test and isolate if you tier two. And those players and officials went through the gate seven and they expanded the time and they did it as per the AFL's protocols. There's no breach in that regard. But the AFL is working on a scenario, hopefully, where because they're low risk, they'll get reclassified in terms of what they have to do up here and the isolation requirements. And what I think might happen, guys, hopefully, is that even if they have to isolate those players, the isolation will start from last Tuesday, which means, in effect, they've got nine days. But even that's got huge implications. For example, Andy McGrath up here on the Gold Coast at the moment having to isolate in his room by himself. You know, it's not like they'll be at some sort of hobby farm where they can go running and jumping all day. They'll be in their rooms, these guys. So it's got huge implications for Mills and Green's fitness. But the AFL are working on getting this discrepancy behind the scenes fixed, but it could affect up to six players. Uh, Tom, the risk, do you think, of next week if this discrepancy isn't, I guess, rectified or reconciled by the government, the Queensland government, what do you think the chances are of us playing football next week are? I think the chances, in my view, and I know this changes every hour, so I might look, I have egg on my face in regards to this, but I think the chances of playing football at the moment are basically 100%. The AFL has demonstrated tonight they're determined to push on. The Giants and Swans made these late changes. Um, I did hear that Gil McLaughlin was disappointed um, on the call on Saturday that so many players and officials had been to the Amy Park site um, for the rugby, but they didn't breach any of the rules, and there's been some dialogue between the clubs and the players on that all weekend, but Whilst, you know, the Swans and the Giants haven't done anything wrong, I think the AFL is determined to push on, and I think they're settle it, settling on a fixture the next weekend that'll see up to three games effectively flipped between rounds 19 and 20, with six teams affected. And I think we'll keep pushing on. This is just a terribly unfortunate development at this stage for the Swans and the Giants, losing a couple of their biggest players. Hey, Tommy, comprehensive as always. We appreciate your time tonight, mate. Uh, enjoy the rest of, rest of your evening. Thanks, Baz. Tommy Brown, he's a star and uh, just gets uh, head around it a little bit as to what the uh, ramifications are at ground level. Tommy's all over it. So in his opinion, Kate, 100% the chances are that the round will go on next week. So that's good news for AFL footy. Yeah, it is good news for AFL footy. I just think, I don't know, just this match going ahead tonight. I mean, we've had word that John Longmire was shuffling the magnets up to nine minutes before the game. We've seen the Swans come out and clearly not start well in the first quarter. In fact, they took until about halfway through the second quarter to start. Um, I just don't think it's necessarily fair that we're playing this game tonight. I know that if they didn't get it away tonight, possibly these players wouldn't have been able to play tomorrow night either. But, I mean, as a coach and as a team, to have the team change up to 20 minutes before the bounce, is that fair? Is it Should it have happened? I don't know. But good. obviously the AFL is doing everything they can to get the games away and, and to get it happening. But... Does the the fairness and the equality of the competition be is it jeopardised by doing that? Yeah, it's it's a good question, and I suppose as we look at the fixture that's getting turned on its head, pretty much every day, and the ramifications for any side that's involved, and it's just a moving feast of. You've got to adapt, Kate, I think. I think that's it. And this is, as you rightly point out, this has been the biggest effect on any match, which certainly was felt by Sydney and the GWS, and they've had to adapt nine minutes before the bounce. I mean, that's that's the sort of world we're living in at the moment. Yeah, and also they've obviously been away from their families for about upwards of two weeks now. They were in Melbourne nice and settled, thinking that they were all good then, but at, I think, 6 a.m. on Wednesday, they caught a flight up to Brisbane or Queensland and... They've easily been the two most affected clubs um, from this whole situation that's going on at the moment. Obviously, no one can do anything about it. We can't, we can't change what's going on in the world, and, and that's what's going to happen. But, yeah, just this one tonight, this is a little bit more extreme than what we've seen in other cases. But credit to both teams. They've got on. They've put on a great show so far, and we've got a cracking second yeah, half coming now, up. Now the game's in the balance, so it's going to be an interesting second half. Ash, of course, Adelaide taking on the West Coast Eagles, which also has ramifications for the latter, particularly, obviously, for the West Coast Eagles. What's happening in that one? It certainly does, Baz. It's full-time. The Eagles, 14-14-98, defeated the Crows by 42 points, 8-8-56. So that means that West Coast are currently sitting in seventh position on the live ladder. They're on 36 points. Giants currently inside the eight on 34. 
as they lead the Swans at half-time by 16. But if the Giants win, they'll remain there. They certainly will. That was Choice Hotels around the grounds with Ash. Need a break, book, direct and save with Choice Hotels, choicehotels.com. Now, the Amy Clangers, we love them. I've been involved heavily over the weekend. Amy, who covers Clangers? Amy does. Lucky you're with Amy. Let's see what Amy has dished up for us at half-time. How's your footy tipping going this weekend? I'll be eight from eight if the Giants get up tonight. Eight from eight? Serious? Oh. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Kate's nose is growing. Mm. <laughs> it's nine games in the round two, Kate. Yeah, eight yeah, from eight, there's eight still one pending. And one to go, that's yeah, exactly right. that's what I meant. Yeah, that's exactly what you meant. Come on, Baz. Well done, you got the clinger, that's fantastic. Thank you very much. You look real pleased. I'm stoked. <laughs> howling. I'm absolutely stoked that I'm going to be 100% for me footy tips yeah, as well. Yeah, you are, there's no doubt about it, because you uh, know the game better than us. Ashley Chu is here as well. Peter Cardamone is calling the action. Belinda Mallon is down on the boundary line at Metricon Stadium for Bob Jane Teamarts. And at the moment, it's a good game of footy of which the leader is the Giants by 16 points. The Swans are coming after five goals to three in the second term. For McDonald's and Reem Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy. That halftime break for x Tools and Accessories by Bosch. Extra fast, extra safe and extra easy. For Reem Hot Water and Macca's 50th birthday, Triple M Rocks footy. Malloy on Triple M. Hey, big week coming up, Mickey. Sure is, Danes. We'll catch up with Celia Pacuola ahead of her appearance on Have You Been Paying Attention? Mm. Glenn Robbins, Andy Lee will also drop by. Melanie Bracewell has a new show on 10 at the Cheap Seats. And we'll chat with her. Plus, Jim Jeffries from LA. Adam Rosenbach's Nearly Meadows with the sports rap and much more. Get more in the Malloy podcast by downloading the listener app now. Mix back tomorrow, Avo from 4 on Triple M. There is nothing like a Crown forklift. Go to crown.com or call 131 604. Sparkies. Beacon Trade is here to support you. Open from 7.30 weekdays with special trade prices, free delivery and a huge range of lights, fans and electrical accessories at over 100 Beacon stores. Outback Australia is big, real big. So when accidents happen, what do you do? Crocodile attack. His hand really was like an anatomy lesson. The Flying Doctor podcast shares stories of Australians who found themselves in scary and unexpected situations needing the Royal Flying Doctor service for help. Without the RFDS, I highly doubt I'd still be here. You never know. One day the person being rescued could be you. Search the Flying Doctor podcast. Download the new Listener app now and listen for free. Listener. Nothing Else Matters, a symphonic tribute to Metallica. Featuring a 24-piece symphony orchestra with Damage Inc. Performing Metallica classics. September 24th at the Palais Theatre. Tickets from only $49.90. Book your Metallica symphonic tribute tickets now from the Palais Theatre or Ticketmaster. Hi, Rodney Jane here. At Bob Jane T-Marts, no other retailer has as many world-class brands or world-class deals. Buy three, get one free. And instant cashbacks from brands such as Bridgestone, Michelin, Yokohama, Dunlop, Goodyear and the Bob Jane Zenon Z7. With Australia's largest tyre range from just $59, our best tyre price guarantee and biggest alloy wheel choice from $119, we'll look after you. Taste and see supply. Everyone needs an injection of kindness. Kindness is simple and can change someone's day or life. Kindness is also contagious, so pass it on. If each one of us did just one act of kindness every day this kind July, that would be 775 million acts of kindness across Australia. The possibilities are endless, and together, what a great country we can be. Do something kind this kind July. Find out how you can get involved at staykind.org. Subscribe today to the Herald Sun and save for months. Enjoy full digital access plus seven-day newspaper home delivery for just a dollar a day for the first six months. Search Herald Sun offer now. Ming costs $31. Conditions apply. Now you can stream Triple M footy wherever you are. Download the listener app and select Triple M. Hi there, Emma Griffiths with the News Briefing. New South Wales has recorded 105 new COVID cases today and sadly another death as the Delta strain continues its rapid spread. A woman in her 90s passed away yesterday after contracting the virus, taking the death toll since the start of the outbreak to four. While 27 of today's cases were infectious while in the community and Premier Gladys Berejiklian says that's the number that needs to come down. We won't see the effects of these 
harsh, harsher restrictions until at least five or six days because there's a lag in the data. So we don't expect to see that number shift uh, massively for the next uh, few days. But We're set to find out details tomorrow on if Victoria's lockdown will be extended beyond midnight Tuesday. 17 new infections for the state today. Fortunately, all are linked to known cases. A Super Saturday for vaccination has helped Australia achieve a new milestone. It's meant that we've now passed 10 million vaccinations at 10,067,446 vaccinations as of uh, last night. That's Health Minister Greg Hunt, who's also announced 3 million fast-track doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Overseas now the Tokyo Games are in crisis mode with two athletes testing positive for COVID inside the athletes village and the death toll from the Western Europe floods has risen to 170 as a massive cleanup begins across Germany and Belgium. European leaders are blaming the extreme weather on climate change. Click Frenzy is on now at Michael Hill Online. 40% off selected silver and 20% off selected diamonds and gold. Hurry ends tonight at michaelhill.com.au Getting down to 9 degrees tonight before a shower or two developing tomorrow. 14 the top showers for Tuesday and to stream every minute of footy live this weekend wherever you are, download the listener app and select Triple M Melbourne 105.1 Shut up the footy's on Triple M Triple M rocks footy This quarter for Beacon Trade There to support Sparkies with 7.30am opening hours, trade prices and free delivery from over 100 Beacon Lighting stores Half-time break coming to a close at Metricon Stadium. The Giants lead by 16 points, 9-2-56. The Swans, 6 4 40. Kate McCarthy's in the house looking after us tonight. Peter Cardamone calling the action with Baz here. And, of course, Ashley Tura and Belinda Mallon. Of course, this is the half-time break, or as it's coming to a close, for Bosch Power Tools, X-Lock Tools and Accessories by Bosch. Extra fast, extra safe and extra easy. So sides moving into position. The Beacon Trades score, but it will be in the third quarter. Electricians, builders, Beacon Trades got your back. Open early at 7.30, they do, with over 100 stores around Australia and a dedicated trade team. Special trade prices and free shipping on all orders. Beacon Trade, it's every tradies go to. The lights, fans, electrical accessories and expert advice. Bob Jane, T-Mart's Belinda Mallon. Ground showing a bit of wear and tear. The uh, ground staff were out there working furiously during that halftime break, filling lots of divots. Also, temperatures dropped about 10 degrees since the start of the game, so you'll see a lot of dew out there. So conditions are a little trying in the second half uh, for what's been quite a remarkable match. Bob Jane team out to get world-class deals on world-class brands. Buy three, get one free, and instant cash backs. BobJane.com.au. Yeah, well, I see Sydney coming home pretty strong in this game. They're only 16 points down by some miracle. I'm not sure how. They haven't really turned up too well so far, but we saw in the last part of that second quarter exactly what they can do. Kennedy Parker and for mine, McInerney led the way in that second quarter for the Swans. They were huge. Obviously, the old stalwarts, Kennedy and Parker, ever reliable in a game when they're needed, and I expect them to have huge second halves. Not much from Buddy. I think their movement inside 50 needs to improve a little bit. If they can sort that out, the Swans will get home. Just on your point earlier, Kate, about the match. So John Limewise just confirmed that the players that came in for Sydney for this match played yesterday. Big oh. ramification for the Swans. Carter? Second half underway for McDonald's and Reem Hot Water. Triple M rocks footy. Sydney rooted the last three goals before halftime. Nine, 16 point lead. They take in to the second half. Footy at half forward for the Giants. They go left of your dial. Here's Daniels, he cop one high. He wheels around on his right boot, goes into the pocket now. Here's Jesse Hogan, couldn't take the mark. Ground level 40, Kelly, what a first half. Picks it up for the Giants across his body on his right boot, high up and under McCartan flew. Jesse Hogan around his body, is he kicked the first of the second half? No, Heaney gets back. And he rushes it through for a behind. Triple N, Beacon Trade scoreboard. Heaney gets up nice and ginger as well. GWS, 9357. Sydney 6 4 40, 17 point lead, early stages. Yeah, it was a big second half to that second term for the Swans. And uh, I think you've got more information on those late changes for the Swans too, Kate. Yeah, Robottom Stevens and Ronke weren't even at the ground an hour before the bounce for the Swans and they were late inclusions. Yeah, it just plays into your take on it, which makes it very, very tough for Sydney. I mean, we talk about the the floating, uh, you know, that everyone has to adapt, but, geez, that's that's a big adaption for Sydney. Yeah, I was pretty harsh on them, said they didn't turn up in the first quarter. That's probably because three of their players probably weren't here in the first quarter. So. Yep. <laughs> so, so, spot on, Kate. Yeah, good point. A uh, kick from uh, Gordon, who slips it inboard on the wing to Heaney, and Heaney marks for Sydney. As we said, work their way back into the match. Latter stage of second term. Kick to Hayward on a lead. 
bounced off his chest, ran back, tracked the footy, picked it up, drop punt inside forward 50, right forward pocket. It's a one-on-one -on -one hickey in the van with Flynn. Back of the pack, Papley, the dangerous Papley, grabs it on the boundary line. Iden had his jumper. Papley hand pass to the hot spot. No one home for Sydney. Taylor's got it wrapped up in a tackle. Ball save the crowd, and it's going to be a free kick to Wicks. So Wicks is going to take it only about 10 metres out. And just a bit of chaos from Sydney inside forward 50, and they're going to get reward. Great forward pressure there by Weeks, though. A great tackle, and Buddy, as every big, tall forward should do, has come over and told Taylor how poor he was by getting <laughs> to and holding the ball. Buddy had absolutely nothing to do with that, and Taylor's playing all over him tonight. Weeks from here, shouldn't miss. Slide angle, puts it through for Sydney. And the game is back to 11 points the Giants' way. Weeks gets his first. And the GWS now under threat from the highly fancied Swans. GWS 9357 Sydney 7 4 now, 46. And that's all on the Triple M Beacon Strayed scoreboard. Seconds into the second half of the match. Yeah, still a little concerned with that ball movement going inside 50 from Sydney. All of their goals have just been sort of, I guess, three have been kicked from Papley, which have been crafty goals as per usual that we expect from him. McInerney's kicked two from the top arc around 50 to 40 metres out. And then that one's come from a free kick. And then the only one that they've actually constructed from a mark inside 50 was Parker's right on the stroke of half time. So for me, if they're to win this match, they need to construct their ball use a little bit better inside 50 and take some marks inside 50 as well. Well, we welcome our Western Australian and South Australian audiences. That's Kate McCarthy, AFLW All-Australian. Ashley Chew is here. Belinda Mellon on the boundary line with Barry Denner and Peter Cardamo. Uh, good on you, Bazza. Kate McCarthy for Triple MC Bar Super Special Great. Comments. Delivering consistent long-term return for members. Seabus for all of us. Here's the Swans. Haywood inside 50. They need a mark, but he takes oh, it. Oh, look at him. Only minutes ago, Kate McCarthy said Taylor was all over him. Here comes Buddy in marks 48 metres out. GWS, 93.57, Sydney 7.446. This is a good game. Far better use inside 50, obviously, as we spoke about just then. The ball needs to, I guess, be put out in front of Lance Franklin for him to make the most of it. As Flynn's going off the ground, we'll get down to Belinda soon to get an update on that as well, I'm sure. So Buddy to come in, his first goal, and this will reduce the margin to three points at one stage. They lead by 34, wow. the Giants. Here comes Buddy outside, oh. 50, he fires! Oh. Long drop, part in his home! Look at him. Swanee's on fire! GWS 9-3-57, Sydney 8-4-52 for Bob Jane T-Marks. Let's go down to Belinda Mallon. Matt Flynn has gone straight down to the rooms with the team. Dr. Sproul is taking the substitute shirt off straight away, clutching his left shoulder in all sorts of pain. It looked nasty, nasty, that injury. Taylor still did a good job on Buddy Franklin then, but it was the feed inside 50 from Will Hayward put directly to his advantage and Buddy did the rest. Unlucky there, Taylor. He's still having a fantastic match on Franklin. Franklin just with the one goal so far, but this is when he can really get off the chain. And Sydney, their last five entries inside 50 have resulted in four goals straight for Red Z. Red Z landing stats. Red Z landing loans for the self-employed. For McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy. The countdown for Buddy continues. 22 goals now to pick up his 1,000th goal in the competition. One of the game's greatest ever. For McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy. And the Swans continue to push now. Five-point ball game. The Giants lead. Out of the centre, Tommy Green grabs it. He's caught high. He'll get a free kick. And the Giants will go forward. A couple of early goals in this final term, this third term, I should say, for the Sydney Swans. And they're right back in business. Long kick to the forward pocket. McCartan read that beautifully coming in. Made himself to the front of the pack and just eyes on the footy. Took the mark in the back pocket comfortably for the Swans. For Red Z Lending, stats, how many goals on a row to Sydney, Ash? Yeah, the Sydney Swans, they've kicked the last five, Pete. In the back pocket, now to half back. Blakey takes it, puts it under his arm and drills a little drop punt. Goes to Florent, he marks it left half back. Just wheels around on his right boot. He's called to play on now. He kicks it up to half forward. Big fly for Higgy, couldn't take it. The fist came from the Giants. Tommy Green picks up the footy, break one tackle, break another. Taranto flicks it out to Haynes, he's been quiet. Now he 
Searching handball, gave it to Davis at half back, just puts boot to ball, goes to an open wing. It's a two on one. Pushed under the footy was Kelly. Dawson wanted to pay the mark, he didn't get it. Jesse Hogan gave it to Daniels, he's under a bit of pressure. Tommy Hogan then gave it to Finn Lazen, he's in the ruck at the moment, wrapped up by Hewitt. Loose footy ends up with Taranto, kicks inside 50, it's a two on one in front of the Giants. What a rampy. Picks up the footy, forward handball, gave it to McInerney, gave it to McCartan under pressure. Back to rampy, needs to be precise with a brilliant kick. Swannies are away at half back, Baz. Kennedy short to Parker and Parker hand pass to Blake and he bounces through the centre for Sydney they're certainly on the charge now over the top to Hewitt by hand kicks it out to the big man and Hickey marks on forward 50 and the Ruckman lopes away plays on he's put him in front drop punt from the Ruckman and the Swans lead by a point a huge turnaround, Ash. What was the game high for the GWS? When was that? Unbelievable, Baz. Giants led by 35 points, nine minutes into the second quarter. Well, Beacon Trade scoreboard now. Sydney 9-4-58. And the Giants 9-3-57. And supporting Sparkies with 7.30 opening hours, trade prices and free delivery with over 100 Beacon Lighting stores. That's all just come from beautiful ball movement from the Sydney Swans. They changed lanes, got the ball out to the open side then worked it back through the corridor and got it to the big man in Hickey. Buddy was on the lead. He wanted the footy, but Hickey said, don't you worry, I will slot this. And what a goal from the big man running inside 50. Put it on his left. That was a great finish. Ah, uh, great finish. All right, Kate. Kate McCarthy, the Seabar Super Special Comments. Six in a row for Sydney. Three in this quarter, and they've hit the front at the seven minute mark. Footy back in the middle for McDonald's. And Reem Hotwater, Triple M rights footy at half back. They're under pressure. Row bottom. But the Swans goes towards half forward. Papley caught from behind. Heaney oh. with the rave. Got the 52 metres out. Kicks across his body. Misses everything. Mm. Buddy wanted it short. Gave him the stare, Baz, like you do to me every now and then, Katie. Uh, Robottom got that clearance then, Ash. He's been thrown into the middle. How many disposals has he had for the match? Robottom. Just the uh, one possession. So they've put him into the middle, get his hands on the footy a little bit. He's got the ball straight away in the third quarter and got a clearance as well. So that's obviously a, a move from Longmire for someone that couldn't get into the match. Sam Taylor, long kick out of the back pocket. Had a ripping one-on-one -on -one with Buddy Franklin all night. But he's just kicked his first goal of the match. Down the ground level at half forward for Sydney. The ruck contest contested by Hickey. Grabbed his own footy and rushed to kick inside forward 50. Which was marked for the GWS by Lloyd, who kicks out to O'Halloran. He's on defensive 50. So O'Halloran goes back. Oh, dummies around. Gordon on the mark. He gains a bit of distance as he runs away from defensive 50. Long ball out to the wing, broadcast side. Himmelberg up, doesn't mark. Hickey, posing Ruckman, grabs it. Hand pass to Blakey. He takes two bounces and sprints from the wing. Yep, here comes Buddy on the lead and he marks. Got it, second grab and marks 48 metres out directly in front. Big build-up from the Swannies. Yeah, and the huge change for me has been that uncontested mark game. So the Swans have been able to work the ball into space. They've changed lanes a few times, switched the ball, switched the play, and as a result, they've had 12 uncontested marks. The GWS Giants have only had two for the quarter. So it's this overlap run, the uncontested mark. We've had Blakey through the middle of the ground a couple of times as well, and Buddy getting on the end of it and lining up for his second goal now. Yep, going for two in five minutes, Buddy Franklin, and the Swans are going for four in a row in this quarter, and for seven in a row. Buddy Franklin from outside 50. High drop, punt, goal up high, does not move. It's another one. Swanee's on fire. Sunday night football, 10 4 GWS, 9 3 57. On the Triple M Beacon Trade scoreboard for Bob James Seymour. Let's go down to the boundary. Triple M Kennedy, uh, Kennedy for the Swans is off and with the doctor. She is testing the stability of his left knee and he's looking at a fair bit of discomfort. Also on Matt Flynn, poor old Sproul was told to... He warmed up, got a bit overexcited, took his substitute vest off and was promptly to to told to put it back on. So we're still awaiting the condition of Matt Flynn right now. Hopefully that shoulder is OK, despite all appearances. It looked terrible, though. Yeah, God, nothing like being the medical sub, thinking you're about to get a game, yep. and then old mate getting his shoulder put back in and going back out there soon. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For McDonald's, the custard pie is back. <laughs> you're guilty. And it's just $1. fifty on the Macca's loose change menu. And for McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M rocks footy. And we're 11 minutes now into the third term. Hickey in the ruck again, just grabs the footy. Tried to kick it forward. The kick partially smothered. Spills back to Wicks. Kicked out of the pack for Sydney. High kick to forward 50. Punts to the side. Franklin over around the footy. Papley's got it. Drag the ground in a tackle. Goulden, 45 out, head over it. Couldn't claim it. Taranto at halfback. Hand pass out wide. 
Hand pass comes out to Haynes. Haynes now a kick back to the wing for the GWS. Blakey flew over Daniels, took the mark, drills it back inside forward 50. Franklin was the target, but it landed short. And Haynes dropped back one arm and took the mark on defensive 50 for the GWS. Let's get some red head lending stats, buddy, this quarter, Ash. Yeah, buddy, Franklin has really did it up. Three disposals and a couple of majors. Haynes goes to half back with a high drop punt. Jesse Hogan's a target. I well don't Georgie Hewitt on the up cover to Blakey's handball there. Cut off there by Kennedy. His kick was smothered by Hewitt. Now China handballs. Ends up with Parker. He was wrapped up by Canelio. Thrown to the ground. Tommy Green picks it up. Gave it to Kennedy. Went to Ward. The former Bulldog. Went one way, then the other. Back to Kennedy for the Giants. And that way went backwards with a 20-meter drop punt to Haynes. Haynes now goes to the top of the square. Iden takes the mark at the goal he defends. So 64 play, 57, Mazza. Iden into the back pocket to Cumming. And he marks and goes short back to Iden, who ran on. So right on defensive 50 on the boundary line. They look a bit shell-shocked at the moment, the Giants, don't they? Yeah, the huge change for me has been the one, the uncontested mark game from Sydney going up. But that's all come from pressure as well. The pressure gauge, Ash, your favourite toy. How's it going? Well, it is my favourite toy. 208, the Swans pressure rating since quarter time. Remember, during the first term, or quarter time, was only 177. What's the league average, Ash? League average is 180, so way up. Way up for Sydney, and they've got it on the wing outer side of the ground as uh, Young Stevens tries to run around a tackler, and he's shoved out of bounds with a footy. O'Halloran was the tackler, and he gets the free kick. So O'Halloran's on the boundary line on the wing outer side of the ground for the Giants, can send them forward. At the moment, they trail the game by seven points midway through the third term. So they go to half with a high drop punt. Jesse Hogan came up the ground, couldn't take it. Parker with a rope, gave it a ramper. He was thrown to the ground, loose footy. Ward, he dropped it. Now at half back, one on Fox, picks it up for the Swans. Forward handle, trying to get it towards Bell. He was wrapped up, big, big tackle by Reed, and now will have a bounce just on the edge of the square, out of side near the wing. So Bell gets up with the footy, hands it back to the umpire. We've got a pack of around. 12, 14 players around. A tap down to Tommy Green. He can kick the Giants inside. Sort of a tumbling drop punt. Punched away. Ground level ball. Heaney puts his head over it. Breaks the tackle. Little hand pass to Parker, but he missed him. Ward just used his body as a battering ram, as he always does. And he got caught high, and he'll get a free kick for the Giants on forward 50. It must be one sore sort of arms, legs, shoulders by the time he ends his career. Hand pass off and a long kick to full forward. Won't be a goal. Hogan drops back for the mark. And off hands it goes through for a rush behind for the Giants as Jesse Hogan gets up, looks a bit disappointed. A six point lead to the Swans, ten and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter. Lloyd to the back pocket, McInerney didn't break stride, took the mark, he goes to Heaney. Big fist came from Cun coming and the footy goes over the line now. We'll have a throw in. Let's start forward. Yeah, Isaac Heaney, very quiet. He's only had the four disposals, but you look at those Warriors for the Swans. Parker 21, eight clearances, Kennedy with 20 and six clearances. Boundary throw in. As, uh, Ward was in the ruck, tapped it down to Tarando. Got caught high, but just kicked it off the ground out of the pack. Ward again fought for the foot. He did well. Released by hand to Canilio on the boundary line. Squares it up, left foot drop, punt towards half forward. Himmelberg up. Off front and square was Daniels. Claims it, runs to 45, open goal square, fires. And misses just across the face of goal. So the Giants get back to within five points of the Swans. That would have been a goal straight out of the small forwards textbook. That was a beautiful crumb there by Daniels. On the run, didn't break stride, unfortunately just went across the face of goal. That would have been a big goal for GWS to really steady the ship a little bit here. Team Beacon Trade scoreboard supporting Sparky. 7.30 opening hours. Trade prices, free delivery from over 100 Beacon Lighting stores if you don't mind. It's a nice little handy lead at the moment. 10, 464 to 9, 5.59 in favour of Sydney. Footy on the wing, Mac and Ernie. Now the advantage play to Marty Parker. Now they've got it to Heaney. Handball's over the top. Got a little handball. Goes to Stevens inside 50. Here comes Barty. Got him. Buddy's on fire at the moment. He's kicked two for the quarter. This will be his third. Yeah, Buddy's on fire, but this just shows in this third quarter how important the delivery inside 50 is and also your ball movement. Early in the game, they were going long down the line. They were going straight up and down the same spot. Sydney Swans kicking it long all the time, but this time... They've started to change angles. They've taken uncontested marks. It's given Buddy a chance to reset and to lead up at the kicker's leg. They've put the ball out into space. To his credit, he's done the rest, but this is just exactly why it's important the way that the ball comes inside your forward 50. End of this game. 977 career goals. We're on Buddy Watch. Three for the quarter. He comes in, fires at goal, and he splits the middle. 
Swannies have got 11. Buddy's got three. And the Swans beat by 11 points. 11 4 70 to 9 5 59. And that's on the Triple M. Beacon trade scoreboard. Buddy's got three. Great finish. Yeah, terrific finish. Bob Jane teammates, Belinda Mellon. You won't believe this, Baz. Matt Flynn is back out in the ground. Oh. And thank goodness, took him 1,944 days today, Boo, so he doesn't want another injury. Zach Sprout, he's spewing. Yeah, no, the poor guy. Yeah, spot on. He'd be filthy, Belinda. With all the outs that are in this game, if you, if you can't get a game, nah, not really. Exactly, <laughs> what have I got to do? Now, that's great news for Matt Flynn as well. He's had that injury-riddled career and finally got his go at the start of this year. So good to see that he's back out there with the shoulder. It'll be interesting to see how he goes for the rest of the match, though. If they go in easy, sometimes that can mean that they're going to come back out again, too. Triple M Red Z, Buddy Franklin, he set shot conversion. Career-wise, 59%, but this year, 23 <laughs> goals, 9 from set shots. Yeah, fantastic. As I said, one of the game's greatest ever. That was his 400th goal for the Sydney Swans since of course crossing from the Mighty Hawks where he had terrific success as well. So Buddy, as he closes in on a thousand, has got three in this third term. Three for the match. Coming. He's got it at half back for the GWS. Kicks towards the wing. McDonald's and Ream Hotwater. Triple M rocks footy. Eight and a half minutes left to play in the third term. Sydney, big turnaround. They lead it by 11 points. Doesn't sound like a lot, but Ash, what was that game high again? Nine minutes into the second. 35 points for the Giants, Baz. What are we seeing here on the Triple M Harvey Norman replay, Kate? Yeah, just having a look at Josh Kelly. He's rolled his ankle, but he's done it in a way that looks very much like a syndesmosis injury. Oh, no. And that's exactly where he's grabbing. We know that Stephen Cornelio and a number of players have come back from that. Oh, yeah. We'll get down to Belinda to see how he's going in a minute, but for me, that looks very much syndesmosis. Triple M Red Z leading stats. How many, Kelly? Kelly, 19 touches, but he's only had one in this quarter, Pete. There's a throw up. Lloyd. Heaney, now we can go to the fat side, kick into space, nice mark going to be taken, yeah, Hayward's got it. It is all Sydney at the moment against Davis, one-on-one, -on -one, and he'll go back and have a ping for his first, and it'll be Sydney's 12th. Jeez, they've lost their way, haven't they, the Giants? They've just, their confidence level. I think, I think that's come from two things, Baz, the ball movement from the Swans, but also the pressure from the Swans. They've really lifted the pressure game, and it's hard to cope when you not have much time with the ball, especially when in the first quarter you could take all the time you wanted. He was great against West Coast a couple of weeks ago. He fires from 48 metres, pushes it to the right. Two behinds tonight to Haywood. 19 goals, 6 for 2021. 71 plays, 59. Triple and Beacon trade scoreboard. Yeah, two straight kicks now. Swans lead. And O'Halloran has received the kick in for the Giants, and he marks it half back. What can they produce? Kicks back to Hopper inside defensive 50. His eyes dart around. Where can I go? Where can I find a target? He wants to go corridor. He found the target in Lloyd. For the GWS hand pass to coming. Kick across the wing to Himmelberg. Used his body. Illegally said the umpire. And uh, Himmelberg looks fairly disappointed. Free kick to the Swans. A kick back to Ramp in the back pocket. The kick across the goal is defending to Lloyd who marks on his chest, he'll go short again to true centre-half back, and Josh Kennedy marks. Yeah, Kennedy gave it back to Lloyd, now he gave it to Fox at half-back, at the true centre-half back position, now he found McCartney, building from deep in defence, he goes to Blake, he takes the mark, wheels around on his left, player on his own takes the mark, they can work it along the boundary line at the moment, he's got Parker short inboard, he's got Blakey, they're just working their way along the boundary line at the moment, 12-point lead to the Swans, inside 50 with a high up and under, Amadi had to come late, Flynn, who's back on the ground, takes the mark. Defensive 48, out of sight, right half back. 12-point lead to the Swans. And at one stage, it was the Giants by 34. So a lot of big strapping on that left shoulder from Flynn. But as Carter said, back out on the ground. Kicks it to the wing, out of sight of the ground. Tarando and at the bottom of a big pack, just toe-poked it forward along the ground. McInerney in the way at half back for Sydney. Got it to Hewitt. And now a kick in board to Rampy, who marks on defensive 50. Hand pass back to McInerney. The Giants got another player down. We'll keep our eye on that and get down to Belinda Mellon as soon as we can. And it's grabbed by Blakey, who runs across the wing out of side for the Swans. Big pack. Buddy was in amongst it. And through his fingertips, the ball rolls out of bounds. Left back pocket. And we'll have another boundary throw. And again, the Swans deep inside. Forward 50. Triple M Harvey Norman replay there, Kate. Looks like Lloyd, who got smashed in a marking contest against Blakey. 
Yeah, just, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a big call for or he was winded one of the two. It looks like he's staying out there. So he's that's on his good feet news. now. Yep. Purchase with 60 months interest free at Harvey Norman. And receive a bonus gift card. Conditions apply. Umpire throws it in. Marty goes up against Flynn. The umpire rushes in and we'll have a ball up. 30 metres out. Nice little handy lead at the moment. 12 points to Sydney. Free, free kick. What's happened there, Kate? Uh, he's got him high, I think, in that contest. So who was it? We've got uh, Haynes has copped him high. So he's pretty much as soon as he's grabbed the ball, jumped up on Hayward, who's definitely the smaller opponent and hasn't shifted his body height down well enough and copped him high. Three to Franklin, three to Patley, two to McInerney. And Hayward's going for his first goal. The lead by 12 at the moment. Just under five minutes to play in the third quarter. Haywood from 30 metres leans back, drills it. Swans have kicked nine in a row and six for the quarter. And they lead by 18 as we approach three-quarter time on the Triple M Beacon Trades scoreboard. Worrying signs for GWS, guys. Their last goal was in the second quarter in the 24-minute mark. So that's 31 minutes since the last GWS goal. Ash, in that time, how many goals have the Swans kicked? Unbelievable. For Triple M Red Z, they've kicked the last nine majors, the Swans. If you look at their efficiency in this third quarter as well, Kate, they only had 11 entries, but they've nailed six majors for Triple M Red Z. An amazing, uh, well, amazing night for footy, really. The Swans lost players 20 minutes before the match due to uh, a COVID situation that developed further. Of course, at Amy Stadium, the rugby union match where players and staff were present, so were the GWS block, Giants players and staff, some of those, not all and players had to pull out from both sides before the match, ramifications being felt right throughout the competition at the moment, and for McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks, footy, four and a half minutes left to play in the third term, Sydney is Ash, and Kate said, massive turnaround the last nine goals and we'll have a ball up in the centre of the ground again and the big one out of that, Baz, don't forget there were three players from Sydney who ended up playing yesterday were not at the ground an hour before the match and have ended up playing in this match as yeah, well. Yeah, got pulled into the side late. And uh, at the moment, Sydney doing okay. Gordon kicks to the outer side wing. Stevens picks it up for Sydney, takes the bounce. He's got a bit of space to run into. Goes short. And Amadi takes the mark, but he's a long way from home. He's about 65 out from Sydney's goal. They're bouncing around inside forward 50. Papley, Parker, but he's put it on the head of the big man who's kicked three in the third term. Flies one hand. Iden front and square got smashed. Punched out a hand pass in the back pocket of Hopper. Tries to kick the GWS out of it. Punch back inside forward 50 for the Swans. Hopper will go again. Hand pass off to Perryman. Another one to Haynes. In fact, it's Ward. And he drills a pass to Davis. 20 metres along the boundary line and half back and Davis mark. Yeah, but he pops it over the top to Taranto. Not far away from half time. 24 minutes, three quarter time. 24 minutes gone in this quarter. Taranto squares it up to hop up. They'll try and bring it to the broadcast side of the ground. They're at right half back at the moment. Quarter time. It was a 29 point lead to the Giants. Half time was a 16 point lead. And they'll take a three quarter time lead at the moment. Nearly three goals to Sydney Swans. They've dominated this quarter. Booting six unanswered goals and nine in a row, if you don't mind. Let's go down to the boundary. For Bob Jane, two nights, Belinda. Josh Kelly has just been officially ruled out of the game with that ankle problem. Zach Sproul is uh, very excitedly warming up on the boundary line. Two scan, he's just ripping his vest off right now. You've never seen a bigger smile on his face. Yeah, Sproul, he's uh, ready to go. So Josh Kelly's a big story, though, Kate. He's uh, one of the game's greats players at the moment in the modern game. And let's hope it does sound serious. Yeah, look, I... Just going off early, I would say that he's got a syndesmosis injury. So typically they've kept players around four to six weeks, up to eight weeks if they require surgery as well. So that's a big one if he has done that for the rest of the season. Hewitt picks it up for Sydney. Kicks inside, forward 50, left forward, pocket deep, and Franklin is marked. But he's got his backside on the fence, wrong side for a left footer, as they say. And he's about 35 to 40 metres out. But Buddy looks right, looks right again, looks right again. Looks right again, looking for an option. He knows this is a tough kick. But now he settles and takes a breath. Will he have a crack? He's kicked three goals this term already. Now he settles with the footy. Time running out. He's going to have to have a shot. Still looking right. Comes in off the fence now. He's gone for the drop punt. Straight in towards goal. Not bad off the boot. Just on shy of the left goal post. And it goes through for a point. He's had a big quarter of footy. Sydney 12, 6, 78. GWS 9, 5, 59.
Two, two minutes left to play, third term. Triple M beacon trade scoreboard. 19-point lead. Kick out from full back. It's going to be cut off there by Bell for Sydney. They'll come again. Huge chase down tackle there by Bell to get that free kick. Here's Buddy in the pocket. Great kick. Lee couldn't be t- Now the lead from Haywood. He just had his hands out. Kate couldn't hold it. Footy goes over the line. Geez, I'd love to see Buddy there just have an absolute roost at that. Lot, we know how good he is on the run. Yes. Great on the run with that left foot. He arced out beautifully, yeah. and I thought we were going to call it for a yeah. huge goal, but he's pulled the trigger. Well, you don't want to see him pass off. No. Nah. Not on Triple M. You want to see him load up from 70 out. So Golden grabs it, half forward, tackled, lost it to Bell. Well, he gave it to Bell, his teammate who got tackled, ball went up in the air. Fox has got it. Hand pass looking for Parker. Papley got in the way. Eventually went to Parker. Parker hand pass back to Goulden. It was swamped. Reed in the pack for the GWS. The ball spills out wide. Hand pass comes out to Hopper. Hopper off halfbacks. Kicked it into the head of Goulden. And that was pretty funny because he wasn't hurt. Hand pass over the top to Goulden. Now he's got caught around the neck. And he'll get a free kick on forward 50 for Sydney. He's about 52 metres out from goal. It was a chaotic couple of minutes there, Bud. It was, and off the ground comes Flynn again, who's holding that left arm, so you'd reckon that shoulder might have gone, Kate. Yep, I said that when they're easy to get back in, they're usually easy to come back out again, so that's not good signs. So Golden will kick to the top of the square, Hickey in the van, good mark, I reckon, taken by Taylor. He started well nine on Franklin, and he'll go back at full back for the Giants and take his kick. So it looks like there might be a little bit of an injury off the footy breed. So Taylor, last line of defence, good contested mark. They need to be precise. Mark's been taken by Hogan with a 1-2 now. Here's Taylor. Gave it a ward. Runs away from the goalie. Defends. It's a nice 19-point lead to Sydney. They'll take him to three-quarter time. Footy on the outer side. Daniels has got it for the Giants. Looks through the midfield. They'll take a risk. Canelio takes the mark. Flicks out a little handball under pressure. Perryman on his left boot. Lowers the eyes. Kicks inside 50. No one at home. And the mark's been taken by McCartan. He's been terrific in the first three quarters. It's going to be a 19-point lead. Baz, a three-quarter time to the Swannies. Yeah, well, it was their defence that was letting them down early, and that's exactly how what they've fixed up and set up in this third quarter as well. That's Kate McCarthy for the Triple M Seabus Super. Special comments carrying us tonight, Kate. And a 19-point to lead, as Carter said. For Sydney at three-quarter time, 12 6 78. The GWS 9-5-59. Another big quarter for the Sydney Swans, Ash. They banged on plenty in that third turn. They certainly did, Baz. For Triple M Red Z, the Swannies very, very efficient. They banged on six pages. Giants goalless. For McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M, Ross Footy. That quarter for Beacon Trade. There to support Sparkies with 7.30am opening hours, trade prices and free delivery from over 100 Beacon Lighting stores. For Macca's 50th birthday, Triple M rocks footy. The custard pie is back for just $1.50 on Macca's loose change menu. Hi, it's Marty Sheargold from Triple M's Marty Sheargold Show and right now, right now, Triple M rocks football. And I'm back Monday morning from 6. Nick Revolt with us. Well, another challenging weekend for the AFL. Spare a thought for the Giants and the Swans. The Battle of the Bridge, it was it should be in Sydney, then they got moved to Ballarat. Well, Ballarat. They were yeah. going to Ballarat. And well, now, spare a thought for Ballarat. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Triple M's Marty Sheargold Show. Back Monday from 6. Or here at any time on the new listener app. In a world gripped by coronavirus and information overload, where you get your news matters. So, introducing a fresh new way to start your day and get up to speed on the news that matters to you, The Briefing. It's a daily podcast hosted by me, Tom Tilly, where we'll deliver the latest headlines to your headphones and then take a deep dive on a topic that's shaping the world. The Briefing Podcast, ready to listen for free at 6am every weekday. Download the Listener app. Listener. Hello. Frank Walker from National Tiles. National Tiles of European-made Timberlook laminate flooring for under $19 per square metre. Yes, National Tiles exclusive European oak look flooring for under $19 per metre. That's less than $190 for an average 10 square metre bedroom floor. National Tiles. Now you can get a quality finish for less. Rush in now and save. Nothing else matters. A symphonic tribute to Metallica. Featuring a 24-piece symphony orchestra with Damage Inc. Performing Metallica Classics. September 24th at the Palais Theatre. Tickets from only $49.90. 
Book your Metallica Symphonic Tribute tickets now from the Palais Theatre or Ticketmaster. Hurry into IGA today for great late week specials on Optimum Dry Dog Food 2.5 to 3 kilo selected varieties, only $13 each. Offer ends Sunday, July 18, while stocks last, excludes IGA Express. The countdown is on, and we've got the Tokyo Games covered from every angle with the Sunday Herald Sun's 36 page lift out. Find out everything you need to know. It's your games, your way. Only in this weekend's Sunday Herald Sun. Hello, bank. Hey, I've had enough of being treated like I don't matter. I'm leaving. Ha! Huh, and where would you go? Athena, they actually help customers pay off their home loan faster. Oh, not Athena again. OK, look, look, don't go. We'll drop your rate. Too late. We'll give you a mouse pad. No, thanks. And a pen that clicks in four colours. I've got that. It's got one in green. <sighs> See how Athena actively helps you pay down your home loan faster at athena.com.au. Athena, love us and leave us. Standard credit criteria, terms, conditions and government charges apply. Are you a tradie that relies on accuracy? Imagine measuring roofs, solar panels, pools and fences at the click of a button. Thanks to MetroMap, you can. MetroMap produces on-site visits by quoting on jobs remotely, saving you time and money. Start your MetroMap free trial today and discover more detailed and accurate aerial imagery. Visit metromap.com.au. Powered by Aerometrics. It's more than a map. T's and C's apply. Shut up. The foot is on Triple M. Triple M rocks footy. This quarter for IGA Liquor. Proudly local, proudly independent. Well, a double header today at Metricon Stadium. The second one is here. Three quarter time and the lead is with the Sydney Swans by 19 points. After the Giants led by 29 at quarter time. 16 at half time. Six goals to zip in that third quarter for Sydney. They dominated. Buddy Franklin kicks three of those in a big third term for him. And Barry Dinner with you. Peter Cardamone, Kate McCarthy, Ashley Chua. Let's go down to the boundary line for Bob Jane T-Marts. Bob Jane T-Marts get world-class deals on world-class brands. Buy three, get one free and instant cashbacks. BobJane.com.au. Belinda Mallon. A fair bit of carnage for the GWS uh, during that term. Matt Flynn, of course, went off with that shoulder injury, got it heavily strapped, went back out onto the ground. Josh Kelly then came off with an ankle, and we saw the uh, Zach Sproul, the substitute, come into the game. It was only a few moments later that we Matt Flynn redid that shoulder, and uh, I would be surprised if we see him take any further part in the game. Although, of course, uh, we said that once already and he came back out there. He did look in a fair bit of trouble, though, when he went off holding his wrist, which is typical of a badly done shoulder injury. Just to uh, explain exactly how almost farcical the COVID situation here is, I understand we have to fulfil protocol and we're just lucky to be playing these games. But Toby Green and GWS teammates actually went through the initial warm-up before finding out, going downstairs for the team meeting, and then finding out that they could take no further part in the game. So uh, that's how far it went before they knew they could no longer play and all the late changes had to be made. Yeah, thanks, Flynn. It's been a fascinating night and there'll be plenty to talk about during the week. Triple M, Red Zen Landing stats. Ash, Red Zen Landing loans for the self-employed. Well, Buddy Franklin, four touches in the first half and scores. Number one ranked player in that third quarter. Five disposals, four marks inside 50, three goals won. Triple M, Subas, super special comments. Kate, expectations, final term. I think more of the same from the Swans here. They'll keep using the ball well, they, well like they did in the third quarter. I'm going to say Buddy's going to kick six for the match. The McDonald's and Reem Hotwater, Triple M Rocks footy. We're underway in the final term. Bounces good kick. Inside forward 50 for Sydney is marked by Haynes at half back for the GWS. Hand pass off to the running Perryman. He kicks to the broadcast wing. Close to the boundary line. It's slapped out of bounds by McInerney. So we'll have another boundary throw in. 12, 6, 78, the Swans. 9, 5, 59, the GWS to start this final term. We'll have a boundary thrown on the wing. Sproul officially on the field as well. He's been warming up for most of the game, and now he's out in the field for Josh Kelly. Shallow throw in. Hickey couldn't take it. Kennedy overruns it, put him in back in and tracked it and found it. Now we gave it a little handball to Papley, then gave it towards his teammate in Heaney. Heaney now gave it to Gordon one way, then the other. Tried to get it back to Papley, boot it three. Goes across to 50. Now we got to 49. He's got a player on his own standing out wide. Here's Lloyd. Goes to full forward. Where's Buddy? He'll come from the side. So too does Malden. No, he couldn't take it. Perryman picked it up. Last line of the fence. Banged it outside 50. Lloyd's going to go. McInerney's going to go. They did. Himmelberg roved it beautifully. Kept his feet. Picked up the footy on his right boot. Went to space. Beautiful kick. And found his teammate, Jesse Hogan. He's pushed up from full forward. He marks centre wing. So Hogan over the top with a short pass. 
and finds his man in Taranto. So Taranto's on the boundary line about 75 from the Giants' home. At the moment, it's a 19-point lead to Sydney. The Giants under injury pressure as well as pressure on the scoreboard. Ward hand pass to Kennedy. Kick inside forward 50, but it's a free kick up the ground the Giants' way. And Finlayson's going to take it. So the umpire spotted perhaps being held as he let out. And he's only 25 out and he'll kick across his body on a 45 degree angle. Finlayson to kick the first goal of the final term. The Giants haven't kicked one since late in the second and he puts it through. So he gets one back. And the Giants go to 10-5-65. The Swans sitting on 12-6-78. Just two and a half minutes into the final term and the Triple M IJ Licker score. But IJ Licker proudly local. Proudly independent. Yeah, well, I was just about to say what a good job the Sydney Swans defenders had done there by slowing up GWS's ball movement. They got the ball on the flash, changed over really quickly, but then all of a sudden there was a free kick off the ball inside 50 as the ball went in. So that worked out well for the Giants. And as you said, he was about 25 metres out on a very slight angle, Finlayson, but he's decided to go the, around the corner and he's slotted it home. Triple M Super Super Special Comments. All Australian AFLW Kate McCarthy looking after us tonight, delivering consistent long term returns for members. Seabus, of course, is for us all. Hey, Ash, for Red Z Leaming, when was the last goal for the Giants again? Yeah, prior to that, uh, 24 minutes into the second quarter. Here come the Swannies out of the middle, and for McDonald's, Reem Hot Water, Triple M Rocks footy. Nice kick out towards half forward. Hayward takes the mark, lowers the eyes. Got Kennedy on the lead, and also. The youngster in Robot, no, Papley. Thank you, Baz. Just escaped with the stare. So Papley's got it. He's got Amadi, Hickey, and that's where he goes into the pocket. Amadi on the lead. Buddy, one grab, two, oh. take it. We're on Buddy Watch now. Davis cock one high. And, yep, defensive 25. Davis will go back and steady for the Giants. They've kicked the first goal in the last quarter under a little bit of pressure. Here's coming. Just fun, but it had plenty of time. Back to Davis with a 1-2. Now he goes across the goal. He defends. Oh, the kick was slow, but it finally got to Haynes. And he marked in the back pocket, moved it quickly. There he goes, short to half back, And Ward will mark and get around Florent. And drive a right foot, low drop, punt four to the wing. Because he had Himmelberg loose, and he's got him. Himmelberg's got a player running past him. Lloyd ignores that. Kicks along inside forward, 50. Daniels had space, had separation from his opponent. And dropped the mark off his chest three metres inside the boundary. It went out of bounds. That was fantastic ball movement by the Giants there. Very risky, but that's the risk that they're probably going to have to take if they want to win this match. Callum Ward, though, that was a beautiful kick. Pinpoint straight to his defender, uh, sorry, his teammate. But Daniel should have taken that mark, shouldn't he? Hickey out of the ruck, gave it to Gordon. Gordon on his left boot, went to half back, gave it to Parker. Parker squared it up beautifully. Nice kick. Mark's been taken. By Georgie Hewitt. There we go. Says so center half back with a drop punt. Rampy takes the mark. Flynn lays and stands it. Swans at quarter time. We're down by 29. GWS led by 16 at half time. And there was a six goals to nil. Third quarter. And now the Swans. They lead at the moment by 13 points. They've got it at half back. Here's Lloyd. In game 170 bats. What a player he's been. Yes. As he drives the ball, just four to the wing out of sight of the ground. Nahini, who against O'Halloran in a one-on-one, -on -one, used his body beautifully and took the contested mark. Now he drops it onto his right boot. Kicked the true centre half forward. Coming out was Amadi. Whistle goes. Was it a free for Sydney? Advantage played to Papley who wanted to bounce into what's got. No. It's a free to the GWS. Papley's eyes lit up from 45. Davis against Amadi. So a free kick against Amadi to Davis. Kicks to Tarando sort of off-balance kick towards the wing. It bounces three on one against the Giants, so Finlayson the target. His opponent, Rampy, got the kind bounce. Hand pass to Parker. Off half-back, Sydney go again with a kick forward to the wing, and big Hickey will mark. So Hickey's about three or four metres inside the boundary line. The big Ruckman kicked a beautiful goal in the third term. Kicks back inboard to Rampy, who marks true wing position broadcast side of the ground. Yep, he's got Dawson short, but a player coming off the bench, Bruin, picks him up and out. He's asked to play on, so he wheels around on his long left foot. Inside 50, Buddy from behind, pushes his opponent, Taylor in the back. Ground level footy. GWS, back pocket under pressure. Kennedy turns it over, Parker picked it up for Sydney, went to Parker. Oh. Round his body, gave a little handball to Wicks, round his body, here's another one. Goal to the Swans. And they get a breather. 19 points, we're back to the three-quarter time margin. He's got two. 
Six and a half minutes gone, final quarter, Triple M, IJ, Licker scoreboard. Well, there's been some very strange things that have happened tonight, and I'm willing to say that that was probably one of the strangest. Tom Papley shoulders out to goal. And gave Since it off. when does he ever give off the footy? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. He's given the hand pass to Wicks, who's kicked a goal. Sorry, Rightly so, like because man. Wicks was under absolutely no pressure at all. But I've never, ever, ever seen Top Papley, Tom Papley do that in my life. I reckon there was a slight hesitation. Look, Harvey Norman, <laughs> he had a look at the goal. Then he thought, oh, geez, he's in a far better position than me. I've got to give it to him. <laughs> Tommy, you're guilty. Loves a snag, that's for sure. 10-5-65, the GWS, 13-6-84. Now the Sydney Swans back to that 19-point lead. And they're doing it beautifully, Sydney, after being well, certainly dominated in that first term. Seven and a half minutes into the final term now for McDonald's and Reem Hotwater. Triple M rocks footy, row bottom. Claims the footy, little hand pass out to his teammate in Hewitt, and then a hand pass to Florent. Kick out to the outer side wing. McInerney up, won't mark. Spalled by O'Halloran, ground level. Heaney swoops on it, but he went to his knees, went to ground, allowed O'Halloran in the tackle, though Halloran also on hands and knees trying to shove the footy out, Heaney goes again, puts his head over it, no one really to hand pass to, so his hand pass under pressure went to Tommy Green, Giants in numbers now, oh, Halloran got to get around Goulden and does, goes onto the left boot, high kick the half foot, Blakey in game 50, floats two bites at it, not played the mark, Daniels front and square under pressure, hand pass nearly went to the boundary line, grabbed by Lloyd, in fact it was Fox, hand pass off the row bottom, his tackle dragged to the ground, Brune at ground level at half forward, Gave off a hand pass to his teammate, who Heaney smashed to the ground. Oh, Helen, it might have been, it was. And Heaney will get the free kick at half back for Sydney. Uh, great calling, Baz. Sydney have lifted. They've got the answers at the moment. 19 point lead. Heaney's got it. Goes to the outer side wing. Kick into space with a good one. Parker marked inside the boundary. What are you seeing, Cody, for Seabar Super Special comments? Yeah, just the Swans on top again. They've had how many clearances they have for this quarter, Ash? They're looking well on top in that area. Yeah, spot on. Triple M Reds in. Five zip, three out of the middle. The Giants at zero as well. What about the kick from Heaney? It was a beauty. Gordon takes the mark. He's a defensive side of the wing. Goes back towards centre half back. Now they'll just try and open up the attacking 50. Here's McCartan. Kicks to the open wing. Rampy takes the mark. So he just waits for his player teammate to lead at him and he goes towards half forward. His buddy on the lead couldn't take it. Got a two on one. Now Buddy tracks the footy near the boundary line. Flicks up a little one. Gave it to Florent on the up. With the handball to Stevens. Blakey fumbles at plenty of time. Then gave it back towards his teammate under pressure. Oh Stevens went backwards with a drop punt. And they've got it back <laughs> centre wing. 19 point lead to Dawson. Sydney at the moment, Baz. So McCartan will go to the centre of the corridor to Dawson. He switches play to the outer side wing because Swans players on their own. Fox will take the mark. Short kick over the top. And McInerney will kick them back inside. And a big leap from Hayward in front of his opponent. Franklin lays a heavy tackle. And the ball spilled behind and the footy goes out of bounds. Jamie, go inside. Uh, Taylor just hands the ball to the boundary umpire on forward 50 for Sydney. Just winners uh, earlier today, Ash in Sunday footy. It's been a big day for footy, three games before this one. Yeah, Bombers by 18 points over the Kangaroos, Blues by 29 over the Pies, and the Eagles by 42 over the Crows. Swans come inside 50 high up and under. Nice mark to Taylor. It's been a great contest, hasn't it, Kate? Stand. Yeah, they've worked hard, both teams. Obviously, the Giants got the jump on the Swans early, but the Swans have fought hard. Been very resilient after having some really late changes. We were saying earlier that John Longmire was flipping the magnets up to nine minutes before the game. So, good resilience, and you'd expect that from a top-four team, which is what they're pushing to become after this win tonight. Swans at half-back, turnover footy. They've got it on the outer side. Tarano fumbled. Here's Parker, Baz. Yeah, Parker will look to half-forward, and the leader is Amadi. In fact, it's Bell who marks 50 out virtually directly in front. Six goals to one in the first term in the context of the game for the GWS. So that's a big turnaround for Sydney. Yeah, and in the first half, GWS had 10 marks inside 50. Sydney just the three. After that mark inside 50, it's 10 to GWS and nine in total to the Swans. So Bell's kick will land short and Taylor, and Taylor who's had a good... Certainly tussle against Buddy Franklin tonight. Takes the market fullback for the GWS. Yeah, gave it a coming in the back pocket. Going after it is Lloyd. Himmelberg wrapped up, thrown to the ground. Still got a handball in the space. Well done, Stevens for Sydney Ford handball. Put it in the path of Roadbottom. Couldn't track it. Daniels off the ground. 
Went to half forward, but it lacks a fortune, and McCartan takes the mark one on one with Jesse Hogan. Now he goes back inside, defensive 50. Sydney are working to the outer side. McInerney takes it. 19 point lead went one way, then the other. Waits for someone to run into a little bit of space. No one really there. Can they keep it in? Yep, Heaney's got it, Baz. Heaney, a little left football, only about 15 metres. And onto the chest of his teammate in Haywood. So he marks on the wing. So Haywood has a bit of claret on his jumper. Something's bleeding somewhere. So he turns and looks right and wants to go right and short for the player over the top. We can mark in Lloyd and play on, and he does. Now pops it inside for Sydney. Franklin up, sandwiched between two giants. for the ball, Papley grabs it on the boundary line for 25. Oh, look at Tommy. That was so good, he couldn't even put his arms up. He just looked at the crowd and said, what are you ringing about that? Look at his eyes. Then he popped it out of his head. Oh, Tommy, that was brilliant. You go, look at the smile, he can't stop himself. He's looking for the scoreboard now, he's broken out into a huge grin. That was enormous, Kate. Tell us. Big, oh, young, look at little Tommy, he loved it. I just want you to keep yeah. calling his celebration, Baz. I'm really enjoying that. <laughs> Even he was shocked. That was a beautiful dribbler from the pretty much as tight as you can get on the boundary line in the front, front half of the pocket. And he's just curled that beautifully. <laughs> The minute it left his boot, he knew it was going in, and he started, he started the celebration. And they say don't come off after you score a goal, but Tom Papley needed that whole length of the field to celebrate, so he's come off for a break. Oh, he's filthy. He's on the bench. He's more and more here. Bob Jane T. Marts, please. Belinda Mallon. He was still celebrating when he walked to the bench. He walked right in front of me. His Swans teammates who aren't playing are right beside me, and he showed them in muscles and gave them a big <laughs> roar and then jumped on the phone and said, what the hell am I doing here? His veins are popping. Uh, and then the call from the People's Call of Barry Denner on Sunday Night Footy. Great calling, Baz. From McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M Rocks Footy. 25-point lead to the Swans Footy. Goes over the line, they brought it to the broadcast wing. We'll have a throw in. I reckon if he ever stopped playing footy, he would be a great WWE wrestler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah good call, Kate. Yeah, Absolutely. Very, very dramatic, can yeah. sell everything that he needs to and... Yeah. Just a great actor. Be like a little sniper who comes on. Yeah, yeah. One of those blokes. Footy on the wing. There's a 50 metres. Free kick will go to Taranto. 25 point lead. Still plenty of time. 13, nearly 14 minutes gone in this final quarter. And the Triple M IJ Licker scoreboard. It's 90 plays 65. Buddy, he's got three to nine. Papley with four. So in comes Taranto for his 25th possession to reduce the margin to 19 points. He's right on his distance, 50 metres, right of your dial. He'll struggle to get the distance. He's pushed it across the face. And it came off the hands of Himmelberg. Hit the boundary line, hit the boundary. Uh, the point post and we'll have a throw in. Two man, someone that was good for the Giants early was uh, Jesse Hogan. How's he gone in the second half? Triple M Red Z. Remember, he took four marks inside the attacking 50 as a starting point. Zero to date in the second half. And if you look at his numbers, four possessions. Hasn't hit the scoreboard, scoreless. Boundary throw in. Tommy Green tried to snap for goal. Forward pocket for the Giants. Got tackled, lost the footy. Hewitt picked it up for Sydney. Kick outside, defensive 50. Haywood tracks it to the boundary line to get a shove in the back. He did, so Haywood will get the free kick as the ball trickled over the line. So Sydney can go again. 25 points up. Didn't seem like a lot, but they come from a long way back, Ash, didn't they? 35 down at one stage. Yeah, 24 in the second quarter, Baz. Kick back to McInerney at half back. So McInerney drives the ball just forward to the wing out of sight. Amadi backs back into the pack. Front and square was Heaney. Claimed the footy, worked a bit of magic in traffic. Kick partially smothered to half forward. Opportunity though for Golden. Hand pass to Robot and had it, then lost it on forward 50 for Sydney. Tackle laid on him. Stevens has got it. Goes back by hand and now a kick back inside and underneath it, Fox floats with a fly to the footy, drop the mark. Kennedy at ground level, hand pass to Rano and at half back for the Giants, he kicks back towards the wing. Yep, and Lloyd went to ground, one on Mac and Ernie picked it up, Ford Hamble got to the road bottom, goes to full forward, one on one, here oh. Buddy! Buddy <laughs> takes the mark, Taylor went to ground and Buddy marked 20 out directly in front. I think Taylor went to ground because Buddy absolutely annihilated him and pushed him off the ball that early that he was just a one-on-one, -on -one uh, sorry, a single uncontested mark in the goal square. Well, Buddy's had a guts full of him hanging around, Kate. So yep. Just get out of the way. Go and away. he comes. Look at that on yep. the replay. Two about me. Hands pushed him over. Four second half goals. Drills it. You'd reckon the Swannies are home now. They're back to a 31-point lead. Buddy's got four. 
15 696, 10 565. We travelled 16 minutes last quarter on the Triple M IJ Liquor scoreboard. Yeah, well, we said he was quiet at half time, but I didn't think a champion would stay down for long. He's had a great second half, but credit to his midfielders as well and his defenders. Their ball use and the change of angles has really brought Buddy into the game. It's allowed him to lead up at the footy. That was probably one of the few that didn't take on a full lead, but that's brought him into the game and their ball movement and their change of angles have really, really improved Buddy's game. He had to be good enough, though, to go back and kick all set shots, and he's done it. Triple M Super Super special comments. Kate McCarthy tonight as we close out round 18 and what a fascinating round it's been. And the Swans... We'll get the points tonight. 31 points up. Eight minutes of the match left. Massive turnaround for Sydney. For McDonald's and Ream Hotwater, Triple M rocks footy. Bounces good. Tap to ground level. Tommy Green claims it for the Giants and just bombs it inside in hope. In front, brought to ground level. Front and square was Daniels. 50 from goal. Kicks towards full forward. The hot spot at the edge of the square. Himmelberg was touched before it got to where he can go again. Turns around from 25. Snap over his shoulder and he's put it through. So the Giants get one back, 11-5, 71 plays, 15-6-96. Himmelberg gets his third goal of the match. And we are sitting at the 17-and-a-half-minute mark of the final term on the Triple M IJ Liquor scoreboard. Yeah, well, we talk about it all the time. The 6-6-6 rule is so valuable when you finally get a centre clearance. And the Giants were able to finally get one in the fourth quarter. Got it in nice and deep. And Himmelberg did absolutely everything there. He had the contested grab, brought it to ground. Didn't get the contested grab, sorry. Brought it to ground. Actually, copped a Falcon. Yes. Then roved his own footy, drove out of the pack, and then snapped over his shoulder. So, really good individual work from him. Just a Triple M Red said the, the Swans, their scores from turnover since quarter time 9 1 55 to the Giants at 3 1 19. So, plus 34. Look at their pressure rating 177 at quarter time. 195 in quarters two, three, and four. Ah, the best stats man in the business, Triple M Reds and Lending Stats with Ash Chua. Sunday night footy, lead back to 25 points, reduced after that nice finish there by Himmelberg, his third. We'll have a secondary ball up at McDonald's and Reem Hot Water, Triple M rocks footy. Big triple header today. Four games on Sunday footy, doesn't get any better. Here's Kennedy out of the middle for the Swans. Footy at ground level, went to Parko, Marty picked it up, now gave it to Rowbottom. Love with the eyes, drilled a half. Real hard little drop punt to Wicks and then lowers his eyes, kicked it to the man of the mark, coming, picked it up, gave it to Haynes, a little underground handball under a little bit of pressure. Here's Daniels, a pocket dynamo. What a tag team with him and Papley, they'd be brilliant. Daniels, forward handball, got it back with a one-two. His kick was half smothered. Here come the Swannies again, Bazza. Lloyd picks it up on the wing for Sydney, hand pass to Kennedy. Goes back by hand. Little kick off the ground, might have been Fox to Blakey on the wing. Perriman got in the way. Back was Sproul, got in the way for the Giants. Hand pass off to Canilio. Another one to Hopper. Wow. Hopper's hand pass puts his teammate under the pump further up the ground. And Brune, heavy <laughs> tackles laid. They stand in those, and the umpire will ball it up. Two man, uh, Cornelio in his first game back from uh, the Cinder's Moses injury. So first game since round three. How's he looking? He's had 17 disposals and, and six clearances. Yeah, it's a very handy start for someone that hasn't played football in so long. I wasn't expecting those numbers from him in his first game back. It's obviously been a long time since he's played AFL footy. So that's really good signs for the Giants that he's come back and played such a great game. And a bit of pressure on him too as captain. Like to come in, a lot of talk about him, you know, questioning whether he's, you know, Toby Green done a fantastic job. But so it's good to see him get his hands on the field. Yeah, it's really good to see as well. And he's obviously had to take the reins in the leadership sure, role with Toby Green being out at that late, that late minute change, last minute change with all of the COVID drama as well. So... Kudos to him. He's, he's played a good game. Hey, Ash, uh, the crowd here at uh, Metricon Stadium make a plenty of noise. They are. I mean, 2,374. Luke Parker's up. <laughs> 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 Did you laugh? <laughs> Ash has lost it. Okay. <laughs> well, that, mate, it's... Have you ever read out a crowd that low? <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no. Here's Green. Kicks across his body for the uh, Giants. Marked on the last line of the fence. <laughs> Gun. That's just, just Ash made a of that through, the, through the mic effects, they are making <laughs> plenty of noise. I'm sure they are out the <laughs> ground as well, Pete. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say 38,312. <laughs> so did I. I did blink twice. <laughs> yeah, did you numbers. think you'd missed a digit there, Ash? Yes, that's what I thought. Yeah. McCartan goes to halfback. Stevens right. left it. His teammate Gordon picks it up. Just pops it into a little bit of space. Well done, Taranto got back to help out. Yes. And he took the mark and cut it off. There was actually 20,000 an hour before yeah. the bounce, um, but 
<laughs> 17,000 had to go home because they were all at the rugby. Yeah, they were at the rugby. Yeah, they are at the rugby. Australia, France. Did, <laughs> did you all go? Did not get an invite? No, we wow. didn't go. <laughs> we wouldn't be so the ball kicked the full forward punched out of a pack and players just dive on top as, uh, the uh, opportunity for the Giants certainly dwindling at every second 5 minutes 40 left to play in the match and a comfortable lead now for Sydney 25 points got out to a 31 point lead this one's got the last goal as Lloyd picks it up at, at full back for Sydney hand passes off to Josh Kennedy and he kicks it out in front of Blake in his 50th game he'll be able to celebrate that tonight as he bounces towards the wing. <laughs> Hand pass over the top. <laughs> it misses its target in Haywood. He runs into Haywood. They both go to ground. Bit of comedy... Uh Comedy capers yet. Well, I think he's tried to hand pass it to himself, to himself. but there were actually four other players yeah. in the vicinity of the ball. So and Haywood got in the way. His teammates. Yeah, doesn't normally work when there's absolutely no. like a lot of people around the footy there. Uh, great to have Kate McCarthy, Triple M C Bar Super Special comments on Sunday night footy. His Ooh. board, big tackle by Rowbottom. Footy went to ground on the yard. Put his teammate Florin under a little bit of pressure. He was wrapped up by Hopper, and the umpire said, "Give it away, I'll have a bounce." Just right. in front of our broadcast position here. At Metricon Stadium. They are making a lot of noise, though, Carter's that crowd. 2,374. Yep. They're very noisy. Very you reckon noisy that'll go on the crowd. AFL record, Ash? Lowest, score, lowest crowd ever? Yeah, I think it's lowest crowd ever, but uh, it is very low for Red Set. <laughs> they would have been at the MCG this afternoon. <laughs> yeah, this afternoon uh, when there was absolutely no, no crowd. Uh, but Here's not George Hewitt. Gave it to Wicks. Now gave it to Kennedy. Open goal square. Goes long. Here's Buddy. One on one. One mark. No. Over the back. Couldn't keep it in. Goes through for a behind. <laughs> It's going to be a Sydney win tonight. They lead 15-6-96 to the Giants, 11-5-71. 20, 30, what is it? 26 points on the Triple M IGA Liquor scoreboard. So Davis at full back will bring it in for the Giants. Oh, dangerous kick. And I'll tell you what, young uh, Iden, I think it was, had to sit underneath it. And uh, he's going to be paid the mark. Wicks came at him late. But uh, just fell apart for the Giants. Quarter time, they kicked six goals to one. And then a five goals to three second term. The Swans worked their way back into the match. And then a six goals to zip third term. Just dominated the scoreboard or dominated their goals. And they now have a comfortable 26-point lead with four and a half minutes left to play in the match. Kick to the wing out of side coming. Won't mark. Heaney just waits for the footy to spill his way. Picks it up. Franklin will be worked out of position here. But the mark's not taken by the Giants. And Big Buddy picks it up. It snaps for his fifth and he's missed. He's pushed it right, his chest was out, his shoulders were back, his eyes lit up. 20 out, and uh, just couldn't complete the job. 27 points up Sydney on the Triple M IJ Liquor scoreboard. IJ Liquor proudly local, proudly independent, they're good people. And we are at the 24-minute mark of the final term. Kennedy for the Giants straight down the middle. Big fly from Jesse Hogan over the back. Couldn't take it to Himmelberg, couldn't. McInerney did for the Swans. Gave it to Hay with his handball. Cut off that by Bruin. Kicked the goal tonight. Goes to an open goal square. They need a good bounce. They go in after it. Now, here's the Giants one-on-one. -on -one. Well done, Rampy. Kept the footy in. Hickey to pick it up. He's going to be tackled. He got boot to ball. Can he keep it in? Yeah. No, Stephen sees it over the line and went out in the full. Now it's going to be a free kick to the Giants. Probably should have had a free kick a little earlier in that passage. I think Sproul it was that went over the line. Definitely tackled without the footy there by a desperate rampy. Probably should have been a free kick straight in front of goal, but they got their just desserts here. So Finn Layson, who booted 22-9. Now he'll square it up. Now he goes in. I don't reckon that was a mark to Sproul, but the umpire's paid it, okay? Yeah, look, that might be a bit of footy karma because he probably should have got the free kick on the line and the umpire's body was uh, probably positioned, was blocked a little bit by Sproul's body and I think you're right though, Carters, I'm pretty sure that did hit the ground before he marked it. Triple M, Harvey Norman replay, purchased with 60 months, hits with free at Harvey Norman and received a bonus gift card, Baz. Conditions apply. Get involved. Yeah. So, here's Sproul. He was a Medi sub and finally, finally Flynn went off with a shoulder injury. So here's Sproul for his first to reduce the margin. So just under four goals. He'll come in late in this game. Kick from 40 metres, pull it to the left, and he misses nearly everything behind to the Giants. Just under three minutes to play in this last quarter on the Triple M. IJ Licker scoreboard, 15-8-98. Sydney, the, the Giants, 11-6-72. So Dawson at full back for Sydney. Terrific turnaround for the Swans and ladder ramifications. Ash, we'll have a look at that after the match, what it all means as we close out round 18.
Dawson kicked it out to the back pocket and then kicked back to him, so he starts from fullback again. This time runs to the broadcast side. Left foot ball about 40 metres to Big Hickey. Hickey does a mark. Bell behind the pack. Can't track the ball. On hands and knees, Sproul tries the hand pass underneath the pack, but picked up by Florent. Florent will go short with the ball for Sydney to the wing, and Hick Wicks will mark. And Wicks, this defensive side, trots back with the foot. He's kicked a couple of goals. It's in the second half for Sydney, where they've dominated this match. It's short now, back to Florent. So still on the wing. Happy to just chip it around now. They've got the lead. 26 points as he chips back to Dawson. Ball still on the wing as Dawson kicks back to defensive 50. And Rampy takes the mark. Yep, what a player he's been. Dame Rampy. Very good player. You know, just waits for his teammate to lead up the ground. He goes to the wing, Haynes. Couldn't take the mark, Gordon. Couldn't take clean possession. Then he took it away from the contest. That was brilliant. Try to get a handball to Kennedy. And unfortunately, Tommy Green got it over the line. Now we'll have a throw at Ash. Yeah, triple in red's head, Pete. Look at Sydney. They had four NAB AFL Rising Star nominees this year. They currently have 10 players playing tonight, 22 years of age and under. And come completion of tonight's game, they'll only be one game outside the top four. Two minutes left in this game. Well done, Hickey won the tap, got it to Kennedy, now got it to Papley's booted four, so to his buddy. Goes out wide, park at a mark. Our buddy's one on one with Taylor in the goal square. He's a long way away from that at the moment. Quarter time at halftime, GWS, they led. Third quarter dominated by Sydney, six goals to nil. They lead at the moment by 26. Parker goes short. Just under a minute and 20 to go, Katie. They're going to hold on. Here's McInerney, who just works his way across the middle of Metricon Stadium. Heaney takes the mark, pops it over the top. Lloyd from half back in game 171 marks Baza. Just forward of the wing on the other side, a minute to go. Thanks, Carter. So Lloyd. Just holds the footy to his hip in no hurry. As we've been talking about for the last 15 minutes, big turnaround from Sydney, and they'll be happy with the four points tonight after a difficult start due to circumstances beyond anybody's control. Iden's got it, though, at halfback. Tries the hand pass to the wing. Rampy can go again. One way, then the other. Just holds onto the footy. Gets around his opponent and left foot drop punt back inside forward 50. Big Buddy flies in the forward pocket. A couple of beat Davis and Taylor won't do so. Haynes at the fall of the ball. Hand pass to Perryman. He kicks out wide to Reed, who marks in the back pocket. So Reed trots back with the footy as the seconds tick down to the final siren. Drills it back inboard to Ward. Ward will kick out towards Lloyd. They led by 35 points at one stage, the GWS, late in that second term. And it's been all about Sydney since then. 26 points their lead as Lloyd for the GWS kicks a high ball back to the wing. A good mark taken by Himmelberg. But it will not matter because the Swans have got the job done in an amazing night for footy. 15-8-98 Sydney. The GWS 11-6-72. Johnny Longmore is absolutely ecstatic on the boundary line. It was a fantastic effort from the Swans. They're under the pump from the word go. And as I said, Kate, for reasons outside a game of footy and uh, obviously what we're all going through at the moment with the COVID-19 situation, but they've got the job done. 26 points as they win. We'll have a look at the ladder with Ash a little bit later on, but that's a good victory. Yeah, that was a huge victory. Obviously, the first quarter, the Giants got the jump on them and the Giants played really well in that first quarter. They were obviously the team that was more switched on, came out really firing after a lot of setbacks to both teams, mind you. The Swans, obviously, we found out later, were still shifting around with their team before nine minutes before the bounce. Had three players that had played last game, sorry, yesterday. Um, so, great win, great fight for them. All right, Buddy, Buddy Franklin kicked four goals in the second half, and courtesy of Fox Footy, let's have a listen. Um, yeah, a couple came in, and really, they, they jumped us at the start, um, especially around that contested ball. In the middle of the ground, they really got that ascendancy going forward, and then um, after half time, I think we were able to a change of momentum, um, get it forward and capitalise in front of goals. Yeah, what was the direction at half-time from Horse? Because it looked like you just couldn't get the tempo in the game and get control of the ball. Um, oh, just stick to the basics, be clean, be hard inside and get it forward and we're able to do that and then get the win. 
You must be pretty happy. You've played for another five years. The likes of uh, Nick Blakey lacing you out on the lead. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> How is it with these? We were speaking during the, the night, the, the confidence of young Goulden and Blakey yep. to, to take on the, the kick inside. Yeah, uh, obviously the, the first half didn't go our way. Then um, I, th I think it definitely showed a lot of maturity amongst our group. Um, Blakey, Errol, they all stepped up, the young boys, and um, yeah, as I said, we were able to get it forward and then as I said, kick your goals, which is important. And you look like you're moving beautifully. How's the body? The body's going all right. Um, obviously, uh, missing those last year was disappointing, but I'm um, feeling good, confident, and I'm um, ready to tackle the second half of the year. No worries. Congratulations. Another great performance. Well done. Thanks, well done. Big buddies, 19 goals away from that magical 1,000 figure. He had a big night tonight in the second half with four goals. This is a Triple M Amy review. Amy, who covers playing as Amy does? Lucky you're with Amy Ash. Some of the stats, the Red Z Lendings with his 26-point win to the Swans over the Giants. Well, Luke Parker, 31 disposals, nine clearances and a major. George Hewitt, he had 30 touches and throwing seven clearances as well. And Josh Kennedy, 30 possessions, 10 clearances, and also laid four tackles. You look at Buddy Franklin, four majors all in the second half. Papley also chipped in with four and for the Giants, 27 to Taranto, 24 to Ward, and Cornelio, his first game since round three, 18 touches. All right, Tommy Papley, let's go. That's that start. Oh, to be honest, that's probably um, yeah. You don't get much a better win than that. Um, to come up here, um, all the things that are going on in the AFL, all the boys, and then to have two of our really important leaders out for the day, down by six goals at quarter time, to fight back. It's probably I don't think you get much better than that, and um, shows where we're out of the group. Uh, we've come a long way in the last year. And, Looking forward to the rest of the year. How was the field pre-game? You must have had that laugh at one stage. Yeah, well, we, we probably were laughing for a bit. Um, a couple of the boys played yesterday. Um, but, yeah, like, I think probably that was what got us a bit. We probably um, we, we probably got us wound ourselves too much for the challenge. Yep. And then we wanted to settle down a bit and we, we regrouped. We can back our system. We were a bit off that first quarter. Um, and then we're on. We're on. That, it must have been essential to go into half time with those three late goals under your belt. Yeah, it was. It was crucial. Uh, we knew it wasn't going to come straight away. We just had to pick it back, pick it back, pick it back, and that's what we did. And um, yeah, we'll move on to next week. Don't know where we're playing or who we're playing, but uh, looking forward to it. It must be exciting. You've been at the club a few years now. Some of these young players that are coming through, they added the spark in that second half. Yeah, um, they do. Like the Lizard, McInerney. Um, he's, yeah, it's just incredible what those boys can do. Go down back. They're, they're probably naturally wingers, insiders, and. Um, to go down back and play that role and to get us going and McInerney kicked two in that second quarter and um, yeah, it's a credit to him and yeah. Were you surprised at that last goal? You look like you were uh, pretty happy with it. Yeah, it's one of the better ones, I'll take it and um, yeah, take it. Very outstanding win after a sluggish start down by six goals yeah. early, great win, well done. Yeah, just say hello to all the families, partners back home, all the Swans fans, uh, hopefully get you up soon and cheers to all the fans down Melbourne, hopefully be down there soon, cheers. Good on you Tom. Good on you, Tommy, and I love a player that just loves to celebrate a goal. It's exciting, he, he, he just goes, he loves it. His head nearly pops off when he kicks a goal, and that was a ripper from the banjo line. And as he said, it was probably one of my better ones. It was a fantastic goal, why so why not celebrate it that hard? If I kick one like that, I'd probably celebrate accordingly as yeah. well. That was fantastic, and Tom Papley was great tonight. Well spoken as well, and, and great to see him thanking and encouraging the families from um, around Sydney as well and as we can see John Longmire he is ecstatic with this win. We a bit saw emotional him, too by the way. Yeah we saw him at the end of the first quarter midway through the first quarter he was really trying to get the troops going round the, rally the troops get them up and about and he did a great job tonight at getting his team over the line. Yeah amazing scenes down here the Swans are absolutely exhilarated after that win because they were put under enormous pressure just 20 minutes before the match. And Johnny Longmire would have felt that pressure like no other as they head to the rooms. Coming up shortly for Mungrel Boots, of course, the MVP award. Mungrel Boots, comfy boots, built for long days on the site. Kate will have her votes very, very shortly. We'll go down to the Swans rooms, get the song. 26 points was their win in the end over the Giants. And Ash, uh, just those results again earlier today. And today, Baz, the Kangaroos were defeated by the Bombers by 18 points. Carlton by 29 over the Magpies, the Eagles by 42 over the Crows, and of course our game this evening, Sydney by 26 over the Giants. Choice Hotels around the grounds there with Ashley Tour as the Swans gathering in the rooms, and I reckon they'll belt out that famous song tonight in a big, big way. 15-8-98, 26-point winners over the Giants, 11-6.
72 in the end. The magnificent win. They were down. They were under the pump. They took a long time to settle. 29 points up at the GWS at quarter time after a six goals to one first term. But an enormous turnaround from the Sydney Swans as they head into round 19. And who knows what that's going to look like. We're going to find out over the next few days what that round 19 will look like with a fixture. Ash will give us the live ladder very, very shortly and we'll find out what it all means. Here's the Swans. And there it is, the Sydney Swans belt out their tune. The custard buyers back for just $1.50 at Macca's loose change menu. Ash, the live ladder, please, before we get the votes and sign off for what's been a fascinating round 18. More than fascinating, Baz. Melbourne on top of the table, two points clear of the Bulldogs, who are sitting second on 52 points, followed by Geelong, also on 52, sitting third. Then we've got Port Adelaide outright fourth on 48. Then we have two teams on 44, Brisbane and Sydney, rounding out the eight. The Eagles sitting 7th on 36. And then we've got the Bombers Hello. sitting inside the 8 Bears on Hello. 32. Here they come, Bears. Here they come. And three teams outside <laughs> on percentage. That's Richmond, 9th, Frio and St Kilda. It's anyone's ash at the moment. The Triple M MVP award for mongrel boots. Mongrel boots, comfy boots built for long days on the site, Kate McCarthy. And you've got your votes tonight. Yeah, I think um, McInerney is one that I would like to give honourable mention to. I thought he was fantastic tonight, but just couldn't squeeze him in the votes. I gave one vote to Lance Franklin, 11 disposals, 6 marks, 4 goals, 2. His set shots were incredible tonight, giving him the one vote. Two votes to Josh Kennedy. He was great. 30 disposals, especially in that second and third term where they really needed someone to lift. 17 contested possessions, 10 clearances, and 7 score involvements to go with it. But the three votes, the most valuable player in my mind was Luke Parker. 31 disposals, 13 contested possessions, a whopping 11 score involvements, nine clearances. And for me, the most important part of his game was that goal that he converted on the stroke of half time to really get them coming out with a lot of momentum. So that's my MVP votes. Thanks, Kate. And you get the triple M votes tonight. You carried us tonight. Well played from you. You're a star before you walked in. That maintains... You still are a star. Ash, thank you for everything. Thanks, Baz. You're an amazing person. Peter Cardamone, terrific call from you tonight. Well Got played. You, Belinda Mellon on the boundary line was fantastic. And we thank Rabs. We thank Jared. And we thank Leroy back in the studio as well. Baz signing off on behalf of the crew after this wing to the Sydney Swans. Remember one thing in these difficult times, and you'll be okay during the week. And that is for McDonald's and Ream Hot Water, Triple M, Rocks Footy.